Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Get a couple things right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Blade Runner Radio with your host, the Thinking Man's Templar, a.k.a. Ghost. I want y'all to show y'all support, show some love. Put some ones in the chat if y'all can hear me all good. Let me know if y'all in the house. Let me get some ones in the chat if y'all can hear me all good. Yo, 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 let me get some ones in the chat if y'all can hear me. Yes, sir. All right, all right, all right, all right. I hope everybody's having a good week. Everybody's having a good end of the weekend. Everybody's chill. Everybody's blessed. Just wanted to get everything right and exact for y'all. Got like 10 screens open right now trying to figure all this nonsense out. But it is all good. It is all great. You understand? We're here to talk about something near and dear to our hearts. Something that we all loved and dearly cared for. You know what I'm saying? We got 55. We got how many? Got, we got 76 watching, 55 likes. Let's get the likes up. Let's get this show started the right way. The right way. This is for the real brothers in there. United Drills. What's up? You see, I got the chat now. Y'all can see the chat. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to step it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to everybody in the motherfucking chat. Everybody in the house. We're here to talk about something very, very near and dear to my heart and yours as well. We're here to talk about this rap music or the fall of. And the question is today in today's conversation, as you tune into the one and only Blade Runner Radio with your host, The Ghost. The host and the place to be. I want y'all to really think about something. Is it time. To let rap music go. As black people. I feel like hip rap music has had a good run. Is it time for us to put the flowers on the grave? Is it time for us to go ahead and. And say it's been a good 50 years. But I think at this point, we already got them 50 years, and I don't want to know what the next 50 years is going to be like. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know. What y'all have done with the rap game, you've literally made it something that I have no intention on supporting. It is definitely time to put the flowers on the grave. If you know how to work your emojis, go ahead and put some flowers in the chat so we know it's time to rest in peace this rap music. Go ahead and put some 
flowers in the chat as we hold this visual we hold this live visual in the name of the rap game we used to love so much go ahead and put some flowers on the grave flowers for the dead flowers for the dead there we go we got some flowers in the chat let's go ahead and put some flowers in the chat r.i.p to the rap game you goofballs have figured out how to ruin something that was once beautiful. And I feel like I have authority to speak on as someone who's done music for 20 years, has toured with some of the people that I looked up to, made money, traveled, has a well-known name in my sphere. No, not all rap. We're talking about a certain demographic of rap. But we got to put rap music on the back burner. We got When you speak of rap, you got to put something with it. You got to say underground rap, conscious rap. You can't just say rap music no more. You understand? We can't just lump all of that into one pile. Not anymore. We can't assume that rap music encompasses all the good things that we think when we hear that word. And now we got to look at it and say, no, nah, we got to say what kind of rap. What kind of rap I like? I like underground. You understand? I don't do mainstream rap. So if we're talking about a rap that need to go, we're talking about mainstream. We're talking about the mainstream garbage. We're talking about drill rap. We're talking about 304 skank rap. Led by the one and only Suki Dookie. Suki Hana, a.k.a. Suki Dookie. You understand? Miss Suki Dookie is at the top of the game right now. Just like Duke Nukem, we're going to call her Suk Dukem. You understand? And I'm not saying all of them are terrible. But what I'm saying is now as a grown man, you have to go through the rap with a fine tooth comb. You can't just assume it's all good. It's all you can rock with. You got to literally go through that stuff with surgical precision. To find music that isn't going to corrupt or put some toxic bullshit in your brain. Is it time for us to let it go? Is what I'm saying. Is it time for us to just call rap one thing? I think it's time for us to really narrow it down to what rap is really worth it. We got 147 watching, 95 likes. Let's get them likes going and help the show. Let everybody know that we're talking about something real. Something real, real. You understand? Blessings to everybody that's coming in right now. Shout to all of y'all who are with me right now. Much blessings to you. But we are at Blade Runner Radio. And we're talking about is it time to let mainstream rap music go? We're talking about the 304 rap. We're talking about the drill music. You understand? We ain't talking about the 90s when you had cats that was teaching, reaching your mind, raising you. You know, I come from the Wu-Tang era. You know what I'm saying? If somebody told me they didn't like Wu-Tang Clan, I would look at you funny as a person. I would really consider a friendship with you at that point. I would think you weren't the type of person I could be around. You understand? Because if you say Wu-Tang is whack, then there's something different about you. You're not a, you're not a normal guy. You understand? That's how we took it. Wu-Tang basically raised me in a lot of ways. You know, we come from an era when rap was raising us up to be thinkers and, and look beyond the pale, you know what I'm saying? To see the world for what it is, but know what's really going on. That's what it was. That was a time when I could love it. When I was raised by it, I was, I was literally addicted to it, you know what I mean? It taught me so much. It gave me a lot of information that I went out and researched more and learned more things about myself. Yeah, the roots, you, you, you know, everybody had that group. What was that group that back in the day, nobody could tell you nothing. Every time the album came out, you was first in line at the store and you was playing that album until it literally, the tape popped. Remember that when your tape would pop or your CD got too scratched? You understand that time when you wouldn't let nobody hold a certain CD because it was too near and dear to your heart. You wasn't letting nobody get close to that song, that, that, that CD, man. 
You understand? Yeah, peace to everybody, man. You wasn't letting nobody get close to that rap CD. Nobody was taking it. <laughs> nobody was holding it. If you want to come listen to it, you're going to listen to it next to me. And as somebody who, you know, was one that created the music myself, um, I would sit around for hours and write music, man. And and it'd be, you know, till my eyes got red. You know, I would write music and try to put as much of the things that mattered to me into the music. You know what I'm saying? I went to, I was a, I was a cypher crackhead. I would be in every cypher I could, any situation I could to get some raps off. And it, and it was at different levels from high school, you know, getting at that first lunch table when I really started getting my rhymes together and seeing everybody's face. And God rest his soul, my man Dwight told me one day, he said, yo, everybody rap, but you want some other shit. That's how serious I took it. I was going to the studio, paying for studio time when I was 13, 14 years old. I understood it was that serious. I took it that serious. You understand? When I got to college, it was the same thing. Somebody start rapping, I step up, faces drop. Because I was always prepared. I was always an MC who was about my shit. I done did shows in Atlanta. If y'all, anybody was in Atlanta around 1999, I did a show at a place called uh, Studio Central. It was a college party. And I rocked out. And I rocked out so hard that it, a, a brawl started, a fight started. And somebody from my school got his face sliced because it got so wild that I was, that I was in there wilding like that. I would go, I would go to any show that was coming to Atlanta. I seen some of my favorite rappers perform and it was it was a blessing. You know what I'm saying? It was it was a it was a healthy addiction. It was a dream. And what it did, it kept me from the streets. Was I a part of the environment? Yes, but did I become encompassed in it? No. No, I wasn't. You understand? I wanted the music more. I wanted that dream more. And now when you look at rap today, you you it's hard for me to think that these other rappers have that same love that I had. You know, I don't think they love it like that. I don't think they care about it like we did. You know, it's just a way to get some money and go viral, be get some clout, but I don't really think they give a give a damn about this shit. I don't think they care enough to to put their heart into it. And I'm not saying all artists, but a good amount of them, the good majority don't care about the outcome. Xanatos, what's up, man? And you make a good point, Xanatos. And, and that's another thing we want to talk about, the widespread influence, right? You know, I live in another country, and some of you guys have been to other countries. And the first idea a lot of people get when they're in these countries is they think of their favorite rappers right now and they think that you're you know an extension of that on top of the media you know you go on youtube and you see a bunch of rappers holding guns and they're acting all wild and rowdy and a lot of people think that that's you that you're the same way they don't know any different and they call that culture yeah it's not culture people believe that's culture that's not culture culture is traditions, you understand? Values, things passed down from generation to generation. That's culture. Not going around with a gang sign, not flashing a gun, not putting your brother in the ground, not twerking on camera. That's not culture. That's not rap culture. That's some bullshit. And when you think about the current state, what is hot right now? Drill music, right? Drill music is... It comes from Chicago, one of the most violent places in America. You know, you can ask Black Ram, he'll tell you any day. Chicago is a literal war zone. Some of these brothers in the comments are from Chicago, and they will attest that it is a straight war zone. So that music has become the most popular music, ironically, but not by accident, of course. And now we have people from all over the country trying to be your favorite drill rapper, which means by definition, drill means to kill someone. So it's basically by definition, murder rap. And I'm not saying there wasn't, you know, street rap back in the day and cats talking about this and that and blah, blah, blah. But it's literally called drill rap. 
And now the kids are emulating a more violent, a more potent version of any version of street rappers that we ever heard. You understand? It's more potent. It's straight to the straight to the gut with rapping about killing and rapping about dead people that you've killed and rapping and making fun of them. Even drill rappers are on Instagram going to grave sites and urinating on grave sites of the so-called ops. You ever wonder why the word ops is such a big term now? That's a drill term. Enemy. Opposition. So now everybody from your 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 your, your street guy to your guy from the suburbs to your white boy out in Wisconsin is using the word op. Which basically just means somebody that you want to kill. You want to whatever the word is on YouTube deletes so people are using this and, and you're talking about we're talking about young people here not grown people we're talking about teenagers 14 you can read the countless news stories of of a 14 year old in a in a shootout a 14 year old shot and and and, 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 and the ages of the shooters are 15 and 16 you know what i'm saying it's not even grown men these are kids out here slaughtering each other in the name of this backdrop, this soundtrack that we call drill music. This is a soundtrack to murder, to, to, to extinguishing your brother. You understand? Shout out to all of y'all. We got 197 watching, 148 in the chat. I hope y'all enjoying the stream. Let's go. This is Blade Runner Radio with your host TMT. So here we go. Now, here's the thing. Back in the day, if a rapper was going to come off and say, I'm a street rapper, it wasn't no social media. So you had to be either a fraud or you was authentic. And usually people would figure that out. They would find out you were fake, that you were faking the funk. It was a lot of rappers like that that was talking tough and then come to find out they wasn't like that. You know, i.e. like a Rick Ross talking all that drug talk, find out he was a old, he was a correctional officer, which is odd right but he was just a starving rapper trying to get on so if you was a, such a starving rapper where did all this drug stuff come from because it if it was you wouldn't have never been a starving rapper trying to get on you would have already been on you wouldn't be trying to get on you wouldn't be trying to be that guy you was there's old videos of this guy looking like a regular dude trying to get on so what happened to all the the, 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 you know, the Tony Montana stuff. Where did that come from? Right? But again, people don't care. But now with social media, record labels have taken it to a new level, see? The new level is because social media is everywhere and it has to look real on social media too, right? They want real gangsters. They want real shooters. They want real shooters that the streets can vouch for i.e. King Vaughn. I did a Patreon video about King Vaughn. They literally have to find a legit version of it now. Not someone that could rap, that could play the role. They need the real thing. They want the real thing. They want you to really be a drill rapper. They want you to really have bodies. You understand? They want you to really have bodies. They want you to really be about that life. Shout out to Theme Music Pro, my boy. I know you, bro. What's up, man? Yeah, that's a good brother right there. Great producer. I worked with him in the past. That's my homeboy. You understand? Now they want real shooters. They want you to be able to go on Instagram and have it all vouched for. They want to be able to know that you really like that. That's the new term. Is he really like that? That comes from that. Because that's what someone who would say who was in the street. And he'd be like, he's not really like that because he's not willing to murk somebody. And this has become common conversation talk. This is how people talk just in regular every day. You know, somebody might talk about that in basketball now. You understand? Yeah, look at John Morant. He wants to be your favorite drill rapper, but he's a basketball player. 
Make that make sense. 200 plus million dollars and you want to act like you chief key for something. This is how much this stuff has brainwashed these dudes minds. These dudes minds is, is, is literally washed. You understand? I just seen a video today of some young kids, probably five or six, can't even take speak words. And they got the toy guns in the camera. They got fake weed that look like a, a crayon. And they emulating your favorite drill rapper you see on YouTube. So with that said, with that said, is it time that black people abandon mainstream rap music? Have we passed that point? You know, they're going to keep supporting it. The record execs going to keep pushing it. They don't mind the detriment it has on the minds of a young child, a young girl. We're going to get to the young girls in a minute. But they don't mind what it does. They want to make a check. And here's the thing. The music has become so toxic that the record labels don't even want credit for it. And you say, how? 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 Because back in the day, if someone was signed to a record label, they would always say it. They would always be like, I'm on Def Jam. I'm on Columbia. I'm on Ru Rockefeller. I'm on Rough Riders. I'm on Rap A Lot. Def Row. You know, it go, you, you knew where they were represented. You know what I'm saying? Now, the new thing, the new trend is try to make it look like the rapper came out of nowhere. And they just popped up on the scene, went viral without any help from a label. Because the labels know if they really took credit for some of the music, they get a lot of backlash. They get a lot of people writing letters to the label about the music so they don't want to be associated with the artists anymore that's how bad it is they just want to they just want to be the silent partner partner collecting checks in silence you understand rap like i said has become the new heavy metal and everybody sits there what do you mean by that well if you listen to rock and roll rock and roll has a very rich history when it comes to music 50s 60s 70s it was about life. It was about love. It was it was it was righteous. You had Jimi Hendrix. You had Janis Joplin. You had the Beatles. You had, and I'm not even gonna say the Beatles because I know they had a little funny stuff in their lyrics, but there was there was an essence to it. And then you remember around the '80s and into the '90s, rap started getting real demonic. I mean, uh, rock and roll started getting real demonic. You know, you had your your your, your, your you know. Uh, your Marilyn Mansons and all of that. And it started getting real commercial. That was rap. That was rock. That was rock and roll at the level hip hop is now. When the Marilyn Mansons came out and it became just this extreme, extremely toxic version of itself. To where the difference is those parents that were buying those records for Timmy and Johnny, they weren't having that shit. You understand? When Marilyn Manson was coming to do a show, those parents weren't having that shit. They weren't letting that music get to their children. Now, I'm not saying they completely eliminated it, but that stuff ain't mainstream no more. It ain't leading the pack no more. Because people stopped supporting it. The parents would not let their kids support it. Death metal, all of that. Yeah. That's when rock and roll was where hip hop is now. It was extreme. It was a parody of itself. You understand? And you had you had uh, artists like Kiss back in the day, yeah. But they weren't the main ones. You know what I'm saying? You know what Kiss stands for. But after a while, it became most of the rap, that, most of the rock that was selling. Heavy metal. It started getting real crazy, real demonic. You understand? And a lot of those people didn't support it. And then it just started to fade out. And now you look at it where things like R&B music that talk about love and relationships and, and black people staying together and, you know, men and interacting with women and women interacting and saying their love. You, you can't even. There is no R&B like that no more you understand now they might still sell records or streams and get some people at their shows but you know usher isn't like he was back in the day 
You know, you got a couple artists like Chris Brown, but it's become R and B has become like a, a a redheaded stepchild of hip hop now. It's not even uh its own thing. It's like every R and B song has to be almost like rap at the same time. You know, you got your R and B artists. They you know they got tough stuff and music is taking a wild turn. I mean. And, and what, at the end of the day, you know, we're supporting it. We're supporting the music. Now, I don't have a call-in feature, brother. Now, yeah, and Jay Thomas says, we do have selling. It's it's not what it used to be. You understand? Artists like that have to go to specialized shows because they can't compete with the, the little Uzi Verts and the, the drill rappers. You know, they, they've literally become the new rock and roll. A lot of these people, you see them at Coachella and it's just, it's just infinite amount of people watching a little Uzi, or little, little Uzi Vert show. Honestly, if you ask me to name five songs, I couldn't, I couldn't name one. But what I'm speaking about as far as drill music and what it's done, it's taken the worst parts of the violence in black communities and turned it, turned it into an extreme an extreme parody of itself. You understand? And the, and the worst part about it, it's absent of the skill. You know, these rappers rap all over the beat. They're not even on beat. They're not even trying. they just talking about their sticks and the ops and I'm going to kill this dude and I'm going to lay that dude and I'm going to hurt that person. And you know what Chicago's about. You know what St. Louis is about. You know what Dallas and Atlanta and New York and L.A., you know what the violence is about. All you guys are from these places. And you know the guys who are really about that life, they weren't rapping it. They might have been around the rappers, but they weren't the rappers for the most part. Now, the actual guy is the guy. The guy that's rapping is the violent one. You understand? Think about it. When did... There was a point when we were younger, when we heard about, you know, Bloods and Crips, that was something we thought was only in California. As a New Yorker, I thought it was literally something gangs was, it, it wasn't like that. You know, back in the day, they had gangs and it'd be just a bunch of dudes like the movie Warriors or something. You know what I mean? But it wasn't no real gang. Like the Bloods and the Crips, like when the 80s. In the 90s came out and you saw Boys in the Hood and Menace to Society and you, you heard NWA and you, and you couldn't believe it. Like, this is unreal. From, if you're not from there, it made no sense to you. But now we look at the gang culture and how it's spread around now. Everybody's in a gang. Everybody's part of something. Everybody's something, a derivative of a blood or a crip or whatever the subsidiaries or whatever you want to call it. All through New York. I remember, what was it, the 2000s? What was it, anybody from New York? What was it like the 2000s when 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 the, when the gang started coming to New York? Because a lot of these dudes was going to jail and they get mixed up in there with some dude from another place locked up. And then they come home claiming they this and that. I remember when it wasn't a thing. Yeah, you had Latin Kings, you had Nietas. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think the MS-13 stuff was around then. But it, it became, it started to get like that. You understand? They did exist, but it wasn't to the point where it is now. Everybody's a blood, everybody's a crip, everybody's something. Yeah, it was like early 2000s. It wasn't even a conversation like you didn't even you, it was almost laughable for someone to claim that they was in a gang back back in them days in New York. You just like, what are you talking about? Yeah, early 2000s, it's just all of a sudden you just started seeing red bandanas. Dipset came out. They was all talking that blood stuff. And that was really part of the appeal because they appealed to that group of people that was loving that stuff. You understand? Dip set. That's when it all started going in. Decepticons, Decepts, that's New York. Yeah, that's it was just some some guys that just, you know, whatever they did together, but they wasn't in it deep. It was just something that was just local kind of. You know what I mean? 
these drill dudes is living and dying by it, man. You watch these little videos. You ever watch that uh, documentary on King Von and how he talking about murking this dude and tweeting about people he murked and it was like a joke to this dude. He's like a psychopath, dead ass serial killer. And that was part of his allure. That's what made people like him so much because he's real. He's really, we're really listening to uh, 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 somebody who murks people. I love it. Yeah, it was just Cruz back in the day. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden it was like he's this and he's that and people loved that about him. And then when he died, it was like he got bigger and bigger. You understand? Because think about it like this, man. Somebody like him, people that get in certain situations because of their lifestyle, a lot of that stuff is avoidable. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, Greg. He said when that banging Little Rock, everybody, everybody around was like, what, what, what are they banging in Little Rock? What? And that's when it it started to ooze, it started to leak, it started to seep in to different states. You understand? A lot of them don't make it. Salute to the chat. Salute to everybody in the chat. A lot of them don't make it, bro. A lot of that street shit, you know, cats don't make it, man. It they, You know, when the drug game was popping in the 80s and the crack era, a lot of them dudes only had a couple years of getting money. They wasn't getting money for 10, 15 years. Them dudes had like two years of being rich before they got locked or got murdered. It wasn't like they was balling all through the, the decade. Short money. Short lifestyle. In and out real quick. You get up, you get a couple cars, you get a little money, a little jewelry. You that man for a minute, just something happened and you done. I watched all them dudes back in the day come and go. Come and go. You know what I mean? These dudes are teenagers driving around in Porsches. Next day we go to school, they like, yeah, son got murdered. You understand? All of that stuff. You don't survive that. The only guy, one of the only guys I know who survived like real street energy was like 50. And I told stories about cats who used to hustle with 50. He was real, but it was realer dudes than him that he was scared of. Especially when it was all going down with all of that stuff he had with, that got him hit up. He was really scared. He wasn't acting like he talked now. I know people that was really around him and he was really paranoid. You don't make it. So when you put this energy out into the world. Yeah, 50 got lucky. You understand? And he was smarter than the average bear. He's smarter than he came off. Right? Right? But if you put that energy on the air, the average young black person, they teach you, listen to me now, they teach you how to live a life with a short expectancy. You're supposed to be gone by 21. The lives these dudes is talking about, the lives these chicks is talking about, you're burnt out by 25. By 25, you're done. You're MIA. You're locked up, you're drugged out, you're washed, you're broke, you're in jail, you're dead. This is the life, that that live fast and die young bullshit. You know they don't want young black men growing older and getting smarter and wiser. They want you to be young and dumb. They don't want you to make it to where your credit score is good and you got a good life and you got a family that you're raising and you got a career or you're building your own business and, you, and you're not in that world no more. They want the same people telling, you, telling people to live a quick, fast, destructive life where you're in and out. 25 is a blessing to these dudes. You understand? And if they do get to 25, 30, they're already burnt out. Yeah, arrested development. They're already burnt out. They live in a second childhood. They're finished. By the time they get to that age, they got no impact on the world. 
The world is already finished with you. Now, now you like the old, the old street dudes that we know that's just getting it together at 45. Dudes is 45 years old just getting the act together. Just now. Then did a 20, 15 year bid. They come home. Now they trying to get a CDL or do something. They done missed out on the years that matter. The kids is grown. They already missed out on their life. Coming home trying to give you some, some advice. You got to get three hots in a cot, playboy. You got to eat for free. You got to have a bed, on your bed regardless. You understand? I had to go out and figure out how to keep a roof over my head. And keep food in my stomach and keep a bed where I can sleep. And sometimes I ain't even get that. Sometimes I got a couch or the floor. You understand? These dudes come home mad late in the game. That's the outcome. You know, these dudes want to talk about, you know, drilling people and laying, you know, laying down the ops. But, but cats act like they don't know what, like they never seen what real, real death look like. You ain't seen nobody really get hit and how they body change, how they body react, how the flesh react to bullets. You understand? How quickly the body shuts down when it gets hit in the head. You drop it in the position you standing in. Leg bent all back, head broke up against the curve, in between cars. All that tough stuff go out the window. When dudes are sitting there on their deathbed bleeding out. They're not talking tough. Dudes is crying for moms. You understand? It ain't like the movies, man. Where they just get shot, ah, and they just patch it up and they just keep walking. I ain't got time to bleed. Yeah, try that in America. Try that in real life. Try that. Try that. Try to get. Try to get hit in the arm and keep functioning for the day. I had a dude I used to work with at a gym, and he got robbed, and someone tried to carjack him. This was in a. Uh, this was in Atlanta. And he got shot in the arm. And dude was a super square. Super square. That dude was out of work for I don't know how long, yo. And when he came to work, he was just different. Like, he couldn't do everything. Nerves all messed up. Couldn't do this. You understand? Dude's talking tough. Like, imagine having to live your life in a wheelchair because you, you, you was talking crazy to somebody. You ever played, you ever got in a wheelchair if you was at like a hospital or something and you, you was at a doctor's office and you got in a wheelchair? There's nothing easy about moving around like that. You playing around in it, but imagine being in it forever. Having to try to get out the bed and go to the bathroom, can't even wash your ass. You got a shit bag. But this is the tough shit these dudes is telling young dudes is cool. But they ain't talking about the outcomes, right? The outcomes don't matter. What you fall into when it all said and done, that don't matter. Imagine walking around, you got a shit bag. How you gonna get a girl? How you gonna chill with a shorty? You get shot by the waist, your fucking dick don't work no more. You get hit in the spine, you numb from the waist down. You can't even fuck no more. You can't even feel your dick no more. You can't even feel head, feel no puss. You got to live like that for the rest of your life. Because you tough. Because some drill rapper told you it was cool. He doing it in a studio. He behind glass. Peace, peace, peace. Justice was today's word. We talking about these goofballs who think it's cool to follow behind some destructive ass music. And I keep asking y'all. With what I just said, ain't it time to let this shit go? Haven't we had enough? Haven't we had enough? The news stories are getting insane now. People go with 15, eight people shot, nine people shot. Ten, you know, Chicago, like, oh, 40, 50 people got shot over the weekend. Like, that's normal. 
50 kids, grandmothers, girls, dead, murdered, stray bullets. These kids don't even got the same principles. Back in the day, back in the day, me and my boys was playing at this park around the way. He was playing ball, right? And it was late. It was probably around like probably eight, nine o'clock. The lights came on, but we were still finishing up like a game of 21 or whatever the case may be. Peace to everybody that's coming in. And it was like some drama. And the older dudes told us, yo, y'all need to get the fuck up out of here. It's time for y'all to go. Y'all got to get out of here. Shit is hot. They knew they had drama, but that park at night when we were going, that was the spot they posted up and hustled at. But they knew they had beef. So once they started to form at the park, they told us, yo, basketball's over. Y'all got to go. Y'all got to go. Time for y'all kids to get up out of here. And we left. Because we knew they wasn't bullshit. These kids are spraying at whoever. Girls, kids, kidnapping kids, shooting kids, executioner style, like just because they got a beef with somebody. Back in the day, if you had drama with somebody and they seen you with their kids, they let you slide. They'd be like, yo, I ain't forget what you did, but I got enough respect. They see you with your moms. They see you with your girl. They going to let you rock. They ain't going to do you like that. Now nah, they don't give a shit. They getting the kids. They hitting everybody. You understand? And, you know, I you can't put all the, like, yeah, you right. You can't put all the, the blame on rap. You understand? You can't. But damn it, it's the soundtrack to, 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 to what's going on right now. It seems to go right hand to hand with what I'm seeing. It doesn't even... It ain't like the music is all positive and everybody's out being violent. It's like it literally one in the same. You know what I'm saying? One in the same. You know, the parenting has changed. A lot of us was 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 saved by our grandparents. And I say that legit. Your grandmother saved you. Your grandfather saved you salvaged you especially you 80s babies your moms was on drugs pops was on drugs locked up who came to save you grandmoms your grandmother saved your life you understand all y'all 80s babies know what i'm talking about a lot of y'all was raised by y'all grandparents A lot of us was raised by grandparents. That's the only reason our generation might have a little bit more sense. We was raised pre social media. We existed in the real world. So we could tell the difference. We know when something is some bullshit. Yeah, right. Your grandparents was holding you down. I was a foster kid for a little bit. Your grandmother was supposed to be retired, chilling. She out here raising you, making you breakfast, making you dinner, getting you school clothes, getting you dressed in the morning, disciplining you. And when I was a kid, I used to think my grandmother was so strict, man. She was like on me. You understand? If I was not home by a certain time, she'd get in the car and come looking for me. Embarrassing me all the time. And I didn't understand it then. There were certain kids she wouldn't let me hang around that I still was trying to hang around. He's cool. He's cool. Now all them same dudes is either locked up or dead. Yeah. Chief, G Chief John Digger. Grandparents passed and the whole family fell apart. Word up. That generation of grandparents that kept you with at your cousin's house for the barbecues and, and did family reunions and all that. Once they was gone, it was over. Your family's all over the place. Nobody called. Nobody hit each other up. Now everybody just cool with 
seeing you on Instagram and Facebook and shit. Now nobody, you know, it's over. So we come from the era where I could sit there and look like, I don't, I don't think this is, this is good, man. What, what we seeing right now, from what, from the eras we came up in the Farrakhan's and all of that type of stuff, you figure we have a hold on this by now. You figure black people will have some kind of grip on the violence at this point, but it's literally gotten worse. Literally gotten worse. I thought we would have had it under control now. Yeah. Yeah. Let me look at some of these comments right here. You know what I mean? Y'all talking Bracken. Jay Thomas says, y'all talking. Oh, damn. Disappeared. Hold on. Y'all talk this black and brown shit. Drugs was the only reason brown folks came here to destroy us. And what y'all what y'all know, and they know it. Why don't we? I mean, everybody's had a little shows. In. Justice Rain says that shows how many grown crack babies in our generation that were birthed. Ben the Real Peacekeeper says it's going to get even worse with all these new drugs out. The Fetty and the Xanax got these kids on a chokehold. Brother. <laughs> you understand? But this is cool now. This is the rap game. This is the rap game that I feel like we should abandon it at this point. Especially if you're a thinking man. And you got your scruples about you. It shouldn't have nothing to do with your life, man. Unfortunately, a lot of us, we're going to have to watch all of this from the sideline. You know what I mean? You're going to get your crib out the hood. You're going to be moving on the side skirts. You're not even going to be around. You're going to be in another country. And you're going to have to watch this shit from the, from the outside in, bro. You know what I'm saying? He said Latino started all the gangster rap. I don't know. You got to give me some examples. You got to give me some examples, brethren. But so I could follow along. You see what I'm saying? You might be going over some cat's heads and they not following what you got. Yeah, I know I need super, super chat. I just reapplied for monetization and all that. So hopefully YouTube will show me some love. But, you know, uh, y'all could drop the... Uh, the the what you call it the um the cash app or whatever or the the the, the um the Patreon link and I, I'm good with that but I'll figure it out <laughs> you know what I'm saying but to carry on to carry on oh yeah we know what NWA was about yeah NWA once Public Enemy and KRS-One and all of these artists, brand new being poor righteous teachers, we could go on forever. Once they started to become really big, the record labels got together and they gave us NWA and all of those artists became secondary, third string, fourth string, fifth string artists. You know what I mean? Freedom is outside, said most of these killers today ain't real. Killers as they shouldn't be. They're psych disorder cases and scare kids with guns. The variables aren't set by us, but we got to move smart and many don't. That's the truth, brother. Well, I would say NWA, NWA was the first cast that, you know, I could, my mom wouldn't even let me listen to that. You know what I'm saying? My mom let me listen to most rap. You know what I'm saying? You know, I got Nas tape from my mom. My mom had Nas. She had protect protect your neck first. I was stealing her music, Tribe Called Quest. But when that came out, it was like, nah. You know what I'm saying? But let's get into it. Like, we we at a point now where the average rapper, we got 410 watching. We got 291 likes. Can we get the likes up if y'all feeling the content, if y'all feeling the conversation, if it's, 
It's giving you a nice little run through memory lane, letting you connect some dots. You know what I'm saying? I think that's the job of this channel and other channels like mine is to help brothers continue continue to uh, connect the dots. Keep thinking things through. Because that's what's going to take for you to always have an upper hand is, your, is the way you, you organize your thinking. You know what I mean? You know, the music industry in and of itself is very demonic, is very evil, is very wicked. It promotes all the wickedness of the world in music. And it doesn't have to. That's the thing. They don't have to promote that. There's plenty of artists that don't speak like that, who don't talk like that. There's plenty of female artists who ain't like Suki Dookie. And Sexy Red, a.k.a. the Hood Rat Deadpool. You understand? The ghetto Deadpool. Like up the video, gentlemen. It's plenty of people. It's plenty. It's plenty of people that could bring music back to the forefront and give something to people that they can move forward with. You know what I'm saying? Self-destruction. You're headed for self-destruction. That song was literally prophecy. That song was literally prophetic. It was literally prophetic. You think they could make a self-destruction record right now? You think that record would get any burn? You think it would get any views on YouTube? You think a new 2023 self-destruction would even exist? Yeah, he said, nah, bro, like, rap is on life support. You couldn't get another self-destruction song. Rob Marshall did, said, I did four years at Atlantic from 96 to 2000. They wouldn't even let that song get the light of day. Bless, 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 bless everybody that's in the chat showing love. There would be no, there would be no way a song like that. But let's get into the let's get into the meat and potatoes. Let's get into the let's get into the to the to the lady rap. My goodness. Female rap, Stetsasonic. Oh, he said uh Templar. Stetsasonic was the first hip hop band. It's not only roots. Yeah. Let's get some comments. Freedom Outside, it says all mainstream major label signed artists are agents, whether conscious or unconscious of the role they play. The softer music came. The softer music came first and put the media in our living room. And now we get this. But let's 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 get to it. I remember. I remember the first time I heard. Roxanne Shantae. I was a little kid and she was young, too. And she was like, she was like cannabis. Remember, remember cannabis back in the day, how he came and he was just this rapper. Like that's how Roxanne Chantel was. Shantae was. She was a little girl that was rapping like a dude. And had good music to go with it. Queen Latifah had amazing music at one point. It was a point. It was a point in the 90s when Queen Latifah couldn't lose. She could not make a hot song. U-N-I-T-Y, Just Another Day, you had Moni Love, you understand, you had, what's the girl name from um, X-Clan, I used to have a crush on her, the girl from X-Clan, I used to love her, MC Light, MC Light was literally like the epitome of a female rapper, MC Light had mad fire songs. Cha cha cha. Dun, 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 dun. Come on, man. I was watching the joint when I told you they had to rock the bells and MC Light was doing all her joints, and you're like, damn, she was cool on top of that. Bahamadia. MC Light was literally cool. Like she was a cool ass chick. Cool bars, cool style, cool demeanor. You understand? You move forward. We move forward in time. You got like, you know, you got the 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 the, the lady of rage. You had Missy Elliott, 
Little Kim, who kind of, I feel like Little Kim was the one that started this, this, uh, the skank bars, but she could still rap a little something. You know what I mean? Butterfly from Diggable Planets. You know what I mean? Just Another Day. Yeah, that song was beautiful, man. The ah, da, 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 da. Yeah, Lanique. Lanique from uh, X Clan. You know, Lady Luck. You have Foxy Brown, who literally, from the first time cats heard a rap, knew. This wasn't normal. You understand? It wasn't normal. Not saying that it wasn't other uh, female MCs that were nice, but her first song was with Prodigy, Fat Joe, you know, LL. And she held it down. Jean Grey, yo yo, how you gonna play with my yo yo? And then, of course, we had the landslide that was called Miss Lauren Hill. Won seven Grammys, made a five mic album. Almost considered she could made she made the perfect album. Rod Digger, yeah, Rod Digger's nice. Lauren Hill made the perfect album. Encompassed all of her skills, all of her talents. The perfect album even when it came to the rap part it still was like mind-blowing how good she was eve now was it sexuality in female rap of course was it overt in some cases not really they was really rapping against that more than anything they was rapping about young ladies having decorum more than anything little kim was kind of like the outlier you understand Little Kim, Shay Noir is nice. Yeah, she made a diamond album. So yeah, that's perfect, right? It was literally like, as a guy, you had no problem listening to this music. You didn't. You had no problem with it. You enjoyed it. You know what I mean? You enjoyed to hear Foxy Brown and Lauryn Hill and all of them keep up with the guys. That's when rap was like at its evolutionary uh, peak. People were making beautiful music, beautiful rap. Everybody was putting their best foot forward in every way. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, yeah, like I said, Little Kim, everybody know that was around that era, Left Eye. Everybody remember around that day, that time when Little Kim dropped and she had that infamous poster. And that was the first time you ever seen a female rapper really go out like that or go there. Yeah, Foxy Brown was like 17 when she did that song. But she was the first one who was showing it off, talking about sex and all of that. JJ Fad, I used to love them. She was the first one. Fast forward, the hardcore poster, yeah. You know, Nicki Minaj was another time stamp. I think everything in between was pretty okay. Then Nicki Minaj came out and it was like a another huge artist that was a female. Yeah, Foxy was definitely nice enough. I think Missy Elliott during the 2000s was a big artist. Big, big, big. You understand? But Nicki Minaj was one of the last, I would say, actual rap sex symbols because she was actually very attractive until she got all the silicone. And she actually wrote her own raps and she could, and she kept up with a lot of dudes. Sweet tea, yeah. She kept up with a lot of dudes and she was like the last one. And Shauna, that used to be with uh, Gangsta Boo was nice. She was like the last female superstar before we got to this era. She did her little bullshit, but these chicks took what she did 
and took it to a whole nother low. We aren't going to say a whole nother level. We're going to say a whole nother low. Straight porn rap. 304 rap. Stripper rap. Street walker rap. Whatever you want to call it. Now imagine. Now imagine being a, a, a parent. In 2013. Some of you fellas in here are parents. You do have young daughters. You do have young sons. Saw Rock is nice. Salute to the chat and everybody that's came in. You are listening to Blade Runner Radio with your host TMT. And we're talking about is it time for black people to abort mainstream rap music? We're talking about drill music. We're talking about 304 rap. We're talking about the time from the golden era to now. Where did we go wrong? What went left? How did it all come crumbling down until the stinky pile that we have of drill rappers and and the dookie suki dookies and the ghetto Deadpool and all her other little miscreants running around? I'm telling you, me and me and Suki Hana are gonna meet on a mountaintop and we're gonna fight until one of us goes. You understand? It's gonna be like the end of Highlander. Because that, that in and of itself, anybody can say that if it was a point when female rap had its peak, it definitely did. And they always wanted to talk about woman empowerment, rights, and, and respect, and things like that. And then they finally became the basically the main voices of rap right now, if you keep it real, outside of Drake. Outside of Drake, the the female rappers are are seemingly more popular than the male rappers at this point. They're going viral more. You know what I mean? They're a little more talked about. So you got to think someone like a Suki Hana, who's who's basically uh, who would we say? Quick question. Who would we say is the most popular female rapper right now? Would you say Cardi B? Who, who would you say is the most popular female rapper? We're not, we're not going to say the best because that don't matter no more. We're just talking about who is the most popular. <laughs> Miscreants. Ice Spice, Glorilla. Ice Spice, you think? I, you th let's just count all the the internet shit, like you know what I mean. All the all the goofy shit that people say matter now. The internet fuck shit. Everybody's saying Ice Spice, Sexy Rag, Megan the Snitch. <laughs> I just read that name in it. Deadpool, the Ghetto Deadpool, Ice Spice. Say okay. So we we you just listed off like seven or eight skank burgers. <laughs> You understand? Seven or eight of the same thing. Seven or eight of the exact same fucking thing. Remy Ma. Scarlet looked like Mumra. I seen her in a I seen her do a show. She like Mumra. You understand? Mud ducks, skank burgers. They literally, y'all all, y'all all, all read off the same phenotype, the same archetype. Doja Cat is the only one that's a little different. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're only hot on social media. Yeah, they're all literally, you know how you take the little, the little paper and then you make the head with the legs and you pull it out and it's like, they're literally, you just... You just color the hair red for Ice Spice. You color this hair brown or black and red. And you color this in, in, in blonde. And you just put the same shit. And it's the same exact shit. Just wrapped. Sweetie. How do you say that? Salty. Sawati. Sawati. Sweet tea. And she's actually. She actually was attractive before she got all the surgery. She was actually a pretty girl. Doja Cat is a goof nut. Let's not get it twisted. She's talented, 
but she's a burger. Like how you, you know, like that corny golf girl back in the day. You understand? Remember the corny golf girls? They used to be like cute black golf girls that had like big booties and they was cute, but they was golf and weird and funky. They wore dirty chucks. You understand? If you chill with one, they feet always stink because they always wore some dirty sneakers to the soles was coming out because they was goth and they didn't care about cleanliness and hygiene. That's what Doja Cat is. She's just fucking... A goth chick that got famous. She's a weirdo. She's a Buford word. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all dealt with a goth chick before. And was like yo. They was smelly girls man. They used to sleep with all the little crusty white dudes in school. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, they love, they love Zaddy. They love him. They love Zaddy. They love Zaddy. All them little golf girls. Weirdos. You understand? You seen that video, that viral video of that little goth girl singer that was in Target with all her little, all her little fucking Nightmare Before Christmas rejects looking like Pumpkin Jack. They was all in the goddamn Target making a stupid ass song, harassing people and shit. And, and, and you're going to get mad when the people that work there is like, yo, you can't do this. You got to call. We got to call police. And they say, you're being racist. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, they was all freaks, too. All of them. Nasty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, wear, they, they, they was all weird and freaky. And had smelly feet. All of them, they had smelly feet. They take them dirty chucks off and them, them, them striped socks they was probably wearing and their feet smell like, you know what I mean, slave man boots. You know what I mean? Feet smelling like slave man boots. You know what I mean? Slave man boot feet, funk having asses. Yeah, they, like you being racist because the people in the store was like, yo, get the fuck out of here. People like, what are you doing? Y'all know we start getting goofy after a while, but it's easy to go there, right? Because when you talk like you, you talk about a Suki Dookie, you know what I'm saying? And you see her now and you seen her on the video talking about, I sold my soul and I didn't know what the video was about. And <laughs> looking like gorillas in the mist. You understand? Boogers coming out of no snot and shit. <laughs> then you see an interview about it. Like, yeah, I like to pop my ass for this money and sell some pussy. And everybody, like, yo, why are you so bold and empowered, kid? Yeah, Doc Martens. I knew a chick used to wear Doc Martens. You know what I mean? One day she took her socks off. She had holes in her socks and her socks was all shiny. You know how when you don't wash your socks and you've been walking around in them and you put them back on and they all shiny and slick on the bottom? You know what I mean? Looked like she was doing this shit from uh, Risky Business. Dun -dun 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 -dun, sliding across the floor. Remember when Tom Cruise was sliding on his socks? That's how they socks look. Dun -dun 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 -dun. You heard? Suki Dookie in the house. Beat up Birkins. Like, yeah, y'all still going in on them girls. Because all y'all know who I'm talking about. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, we just being real. We just calling it a spade a spade. Yeah, dirty kids, dirty vans. That's the Doja Cat archetype. She's just famous. But she's that girl. Don't take a shower every day. You know what I'm saying? Probably pick a nose in front of you and have all type of vaginal issues every other day. You know, real smelly girls, man. But they always had body. They was always thick or something. But they, they didn't like black guys, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah, Dr. Umi. How mad, mad bus, bus driver used to say? Dr. Umi? Umi? <laughs> Yo. Dr. Umar sitting there like, yeah, I got to get an interview with uh, Suki Hana. Mm -hmm. Yo, the motherfucking, the motherfucking pro-black niggas be funny, man. Niggas, them niggas, I, you know what? My problem with pro-black dudes 
is that most of them don't ever call out the bullshit. They don't encompass what's wrong. They only talk about black queen and black king. And it's like, nah, man. Everybody ain't a fucking king, dog. And every chick ain't a fucking queen. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. You know what I'm saying? Stop doing that shit. They just talk like a way like somebody would talk like they want girls to like them. You know what I mean? Like, and, and now the girls are so ratchet, that don't even work no more. Back in the day, you could get away with that shit. Back in the day, you could get you could get away with all that onk shit and all them incense and all that shit. You could get away with all that black queen, you the mistress of the earth. I just want to, uh, you know, I just want to pour hot oil and honey in your path so you can walk and I'll bow and shit and all that dumb shit. They used to say that back in the day and it used to work. Now, these girls are so ratchet, that shit don't even sound right, nigga. If you ain't talking about scamming or holding a stick and drinking some lean or murking somebody, them bitches don't want your ass, nigga. The black woman's is good. You understand? Goofballs. Goofballs. Who don't call out the shit, man? can't have this man you can't have these girls be the staple the representation man you understand that's why all these girls walk around yes eh, every fucking where they go you know what i mean running around like fucking critters and shit gremlins too the new batch <laughs> you know what i'm saying Yeah, most pro pro black dudes are gumpies. You understand? Yes, yes. Gremlins to the new batch, yo. And they be wondering why you talk about why dudes don't go out no more. Why dudes want to go around and be around a bunch of wild fucking. You know what I mean? In the club, you go to the club, bunch of ratchet chicks in there like Fraggles. Remember Fraggle Rock? In the, in the intro to Fraggle Rock, they was all in the Fraggle shit, just acting all crazy, jumping around and shit. Like, that's how they act, like a bunch of wild Fraggles. Yo. Fraggle Rock miscreants. No decorum. No self-decorum. No self-control. And the crazy shit is a lot of these pro-black dudes used to gas these chicks up so much, right? They've been gassed up so much. They really think they could fuck you up. That's how much they think that, you know, the average dude is pussy. Yeah, straggle rock. <laughs> straggle rock. You understand? Down in straggle rock. They think they can fuck you up. Because they really believe the hype. You understand? That's the difference between men and women in a lot of ways. Women believe the hype, my nigga. That's why they always talk about how they fuck some, some dirtbag nigga and they be like, yo... The nigga just said the same thing over to her, over and over till she actually started to believe it. And you'd be like, how you fall for that? It's like, yo, gullible gumps. You understand? So they believe that shit wholeheartedly. They really think, yo, he said, all them hoes is killer clowns from outer space. Word to minds. Killer clowns from outer space, my nigga. It ain't even funny no more. Straggle Rock That was a good one That was a good one Give him a 100 For that good joke That was a good joke there That was high level High level joke there You understand They really believe it They really believe the hype son So when someone puts out A certain energy in the music They follow suit Women and young motherfuckers Follow rap don't they? Who really be on raps nuts right now? Chicks that's in their thirties and thirty five, forty, still listening to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And teenage young motherfuckers, men and both, male and female, they all in the same little pile of goofiness. You understand? Word the minds. They the only ones that support this shit. 
Grown men don't listen to this shit. Not grown men with any sense. Just simp dogs. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. We talking about Suki Dookie here. These chicks is following a Suki Dookie. You know what I mean? A chick that if you worked in the back of a warehouse and she was back there, which you wouldn't even say nothing to. You wouldn't even want no time with that, dog. Suki Dookie shit smell like straight hot dog water and bad decisions, my nigga. Yeah, they listening to it like that shit is the gospel, son. Ain't no grown fucking men listening to this bullshit. It's bullshit. Let's be for real. This is bullshit, bro. You know grown men fucking with that corny ass shit. But older chicks do. A chick my age is listening to some young Sukihana sexy red bullshit. In the car. Yeah, nah. My booty hoe brown. My booty. Pound town and shit. Listening to it in the car. Word, straight Pennywise looking chicks, man. You know what I mean? Walk past the sewer drain, like, hey, Georgie. You know what I mean? Grab your ankle and shit while you're trying to run away, man. Word, button bullshit. Hot dog water marauders, nigga. Talking about hot dog water marauders, man, that you could flip for a quarter on the border. <laughs> Word. Skankalicious Rex, man. How we get to that? Where they not even it's different if they was like, um like at least with like Nicki Minaj, she was like kind of pretty though. She looked good in certain situations. These chicks ain't even cute. And I keep telling dudes that I said that in the video, like, yo, they they lowering the bar to the to the goddamn gravel, son. I seen an interview with Suki Hana, she has some big fake ass. Uh, 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 Spalding Balloon fake breasts on That shit look nuts Like yo And then she's walking around With the whole shirt open now She just rocking the whole shirt open That's how much That's how much she stands on that That, that represents her Cause think about it man You can't be putting that type of prostitute hooker energy out in the street. Because back in the day, I told y'all in the video, girls like that were not allowed to intermingle with society, bro. You understand what I'm saying? Hookers, street walkers, they had to be in a brothel away from everyone. Because nobody trusted them like that. They had to eat, sleep, shit, and everything in the brothel. They literally paid rent in that motherfucker. They wasn't allowed to go to, they wasn't allowed to work at the market. They wasn't allowed to do nothing. Because the wives didn't want them around the husbands. Nobody wanted them in the society. They were social pariahs. Now they're the motherfucking ones running the game. Now they out there preaching all that goofy shit on the internet. Telling girls how to date and how they should treat relationships. Like, yo, are we hearing this right now? That's like literally letting a motherfucking crackhead go up there and tell you like, this is how you supposed to live life. This is how you supposed to. This is how you win in the world. A full blown. We got full blown hobgoblins. Straight demigorgons from fucking Stranger Things. You bitches just demigorgons, nigga. Bunch of demigorg demigorgons. Stranger Things ass bitches, man. Out here telling everybody how they supposed to move. The fuck? Yeah, going to them simp ass podcast niggas. I'm old drink your bath water niggas, man. Little drink your bath water ass goofball ass niggas, man. Gassing these chicks up, man. Remember when the little young rapper, when she was on a panel, Suki Dookie, and she was on a, a panel, and the little young rapper came up and kissed her on the mouth? I'm like, yo, this nigga gonna have to get his teeth changed, man. Nigga gonna have to change his teeth, man. You got mad bacteriums flying around in your gum line now, dog. What's wrong with you, son? That's why I told you. These little niggas be thirsty for chicks like that right now. To make him do that. Like he couldn't help himself. Like, ah. Suki dookie, son. Come on, son. 
dude went up there and kissed her like, yo, are you serious? That's what I'm telling you. These little dudes be thirsty, son. Yeah, twerking on six-year-old boys and nobody say shit. Because it's, the bar is so low on degeneracy. It's just like, that's just who she is. She's just being herself. Yeah, that nigga, yeah, YK Osiris, man. That nigga need to go wash his mouth out with the bleach. Nigga need to go to the dentist like, yo, I need all of these changed out. Just for no reason. You know what I mean? Osiris going down there with Diddy having them weird little, little sword fighting parties, man. Yeah, you know you just kissed every nigga in the hood? Don't, <laughs> don't be a menace shit. Yo. Yo, Megan Thee Stallion, come on, man. She looked like a Wii character. Remember the, remember the original Wii characters, the little round face? Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> What'd you say? He said, Boss Don, Boss Don Dada said, I cringe like he tore his ACL and out for the season. Like, old boy ain't going to be the same after he tried to kiss that. Yo, son. Everything for the rest of his life is going to taste like hot dog water, man. You understand? Skank sauce. She like a wee character, son. You know what I mean? Come on, man. Ew. Remember that, yo? She's so gross. Suki Dookie is so gross that she had an actual porn out and niggas was not watching that shit, bro. Of her giving head, niggas was like, mm, I'm straight. I just seen a screenshot of it and I was like disgusted. Like, like, ugh. You know what I mean? Come on, man. We know Megan is part fucking battle toad, my nigga. Remember what I told you, man? She's putting them, she's putting them dick beaters on Tory Lanez, nigga. You know what I mean? By the end of that shit, that nigga had one shoe on. She knocked that nigga out of a sneaker. Don't see it. You never seen it? Don't watch it. You don't even... I couldn't even get... I just looked at, like, media takeout and just seen, like, the, the thumbnail. And I was like, ugh. No thanks. Yo, come on. Suki Dookie. All of them. All of them, man. All of them. All of them. Bottom of the barrel, son. And the worst part about it, can't none of these bitches rap. Not one. Not one of these motherfuckers can rap, son. Rap is too fucking easy now. I remember back in the day, if you couldn't rap, nigga, you didn't rap, nigga. You understand? I done made niggas who can rap stop rapping around me. You understand? I did that on a lot of occasions. I done made niggas who can rap stop rapping. Back in the day, if you couldn't rap, nigga, you didn't. Everybody had the homeboy who could rap. Everybody had the homeboy who get drunk and fuck around. And everybody had the homeboys who didn't even try to rap. Because they knew they weren't good. They wouldn't even waste their fucking time. You know what I mean? If you was rapping back in the day when you shouldn't have been, you was going to get ridiculed for being trash. You probably couldn't even finish your rhyme, son. Because back in the day, in them ciphers, niggas would just cut you off and start rapping. You know what I'm saying? If you started rapping and you was trash, a nigga was cutting you off. You wasn't even finishing that shit. And I was that nigga cutting you off. Because my shit never ran out. So if you got me waiting to rap and you wasting the fucking airspace with some bullshit, I was just going to rap and shut you the fuck up. And nobody was going to nobody was going to stop it because they wanted to hear me, not the bullshit. These motherfuckers can't even be rapping, dog. Like, yo, you you like there's no story about none of them having like a rap come up like where they was really rhyming except Nicki Minaj. She was the only one that was out there really trying to rap. And had a story of the come up of the writing in the studios and really trying to be something. None of them got that story. Like, yeah, 
Um, Ice Spice never was like, yeah, I used to just write rhymes back in the day, and I just wanted it. And Suki Hana, like, yeah, I used to have writing when I'm writing. I wanted to be like Queen Latifah and all that shit. None of these bitches ever talk about nothing related to rap or how they became rappers because they just ain't rapping. They just doing it because it's something to do and it's easy. They not, none of them got a story talking about when they tried to spit or when they first fell in love with it or when they first felt like, come on, son. These little niggas ain't got no stories like that. They just made, them niggas wrote like 10 raps, made some shit, put it on the internet. I don't know how to fuck. And then all of a sudden these niggas is considered rap. They don't know how to do no shows. They can't perform. And they wonder why these niggas ain't selling no records and no tours. Niggas can't perform. Nobody want to see you go up there with your pants hanging off your ass and 15 other niggas on stage rapping all in, running off. Come on, son. Ain't nobody paying to go to that shit. Yeah, you don't even know where they come from. You're like, where these niggas come from? Where the fuck did y'all come from, dog? All it's so rap is so bad. Rap is so bad that everything that used to represent hip hop is whack now. Double XXL, Source Magazine, all these shits used to mean something back in the day, dog. When the Source Magazine came out, you was at the record store copying that shit. ASAP. XXL, you was copping that shit. ASAP. You want to see the fucking the, the, the ratings. You want to see who got five mics. You want to see the hip hop quotable. You cared about that shit. That shit don't even exist no more. Yeah, and all these rap all the rap chicks want to rap about is sex. Like, yo, what the fuck? How many bars can you write about sucking dick? Like, how many bars can you write about sucking dick and taking somebody money? Like, how the fuck, how are y'all keep, how can you take three? <laughs> it's like, yo, son, how are y'all rapping this shit this long? This, this, this is insane. It's time to let this shit go, son. It's time to let it go, son. Yeah. I remember Mo when the Truth got five mics and Illmatic and fucking Aquemini. I remember the albums that got fucking uh, five mics still. I think uh, Midnight Marauders got five mics. Who got five mics back in the day? Scarface got five mics for his solo album. Who else got five mics? I'm trying to think. That shit meant something, bro. Five mics meant something. Like, I would buy your shit if you got five mics. If y'all haven't got five mics, I'm buying it. I wouldn't even think about it. If I didn't know who you was, I'm buying it. Yeah, when Future popped off, I was like, Ugh. Mob Deep, I think, was that Murder Music got five mics? Or was that uh, Infamous? Yeah, you, you try to remember, because, yo... How many of y'all, how many of y'all used to take the rap posters out the magazine and put them on your wall? Illmatic was definitely five. Stillmatic, hell yeah, deserved it. How many of y'all used to take the album, Life After Death got five, yep, 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 yep. Used to take the album covers and put them on the wall, only built for Cuban links. I had a whole section. I had like a Wu Tang section, a Queen Break section, a Westbrook. My whole wall was covered in college, bro. The niggas couldn't even see the wall. And if you had to move, you took all of them shits down, mad gentle, put them in something. Shits was like it was like it was like uh, it was like souvenirs. It was like yo, you know what I'm saying? Antiques. Wall report. I bought the wall report like three times in my life. Dead ass. Yeah, word up. Word up. You word up, word up. Yeah, you you literally decorate your room with rappers, nigga. Man. Yeah, I remember Benzino gave himself five mic. Niggas like fuck out of here. Yeah, you was reading the credits, looking at the pictures. You open it up, you open the album up. And if they had the lyrics, I remember it was written, had the lyrics, Nas, it was written, had the lyrics in it. I was like, oh, shit. 
I was like blown away. Like, oh shit, I get to read Nas's raps. Bruh. I used to watch video music box all fucking night. Remember taping radio shows? You would tape the re- tape the songs and bring them to school. I remember when Mob Deep came out with Shook Ones and I, I heard it on the Stretch and Barbito show. And they played that shit and I taped it throughout the night like four times. And I went to school and I was in the zone, dog. I never even heard of Mob Deep. But that was like the illest shit I ever heard in my life up to that point. And I was walking around school like I had the Indiana Jones jewels, nigga. Like, like yo, you, you got to hear this shit. Niggas hearing that shit like, what the fuck is this? Like, nigga, it's Mob Deep. They're like, what is that? I was like, I don't know. But I'm going to find out. The box. Yo, son, the box. Come on, Yo MTV Raps, nigga. Yo MTV Raps is like a part of our childhood, bro. I used to get mad when that shit turned off. You know what I mean? Yo, yeah, Silk Dawn. You make the mixtapes. I used to get go go out to the city, get the Clue tapes and the Ron G and the SNS tapes. My G, when you came home, yo, I couldn't keep no headphones back in the day, bro. You understand? I would run through headphones. I'd run through CD players, portable CD players. I'd run through them shits. You know what I mean? Taping videos, and then your friends come over and you just play all the videos. It'd it be like, it'd be like, yo, you niggas would sit there and watch taped videos. Like your friends would come over and be like, yo, put that joint in, and you just if that shit was rocking for mad long, niggas was feeling mad good, son. Like you was good. Joe Claire for sure. Joe Claire Tigger. It was definitely Joe Claire, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you be running through them CD players. The Annie Shock, that yellow joint. The yellow Annie Shock CD player. Remember when that came out? Yo, man, you couldn't tell niggas nothing, son. Anything coming out of Queens getting played. Royal Flush, Mike Geronimo, all Queens, CNN. Yo. Word to mother, man. Yo, yeah, when they had the CD player that didn't skip when you was walking, Jay Thomas said he had to get the CD player that didn't skip, man. Yo, them bus rides and train rides and walks was amazing back in the day, son. Word. I tell you a funny ass story. Back in the day, remember I used to just go remember I used to just go to the mall as a kid? You just go to the mall, like just for no reason. You ain't got no money like that. We used to go to the mall, holler at girls. Just go to the mall, look at shit. You know, go in the CD store. Remember they used to let you listen to the music? You go in the CD store and be fucking vibing out the shit. And I remember we, my man bought um, AT Aliens, Outkast. He bought AT Aliens tape because of the, the song. And I remember we was walking home from the mall. And we was all talking shit, you know, carrying on. And this nigga was listening to that shit in complete... Silence. This nigga would not say nothing. So we just start fucking with him. Like, yo, nigga, what the fuck is on? You good, bro? What's wrong with you? That nigga spazzed on. He said, yo, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, yo. This shit is ill, nigga. Shut the fuck up. He's like, damn, nigga. Like, if that ain't a motherfucking promotion for a, a, a tape I've ever heard in my life. You know what I'm saying? That nigga you literally caught a spasm because we wasn't. We was interrupting this nigga's silence listening to that album. That's how hard body that shit was. You understand? That album fucked niggas up. Because if you was from any other place and you didn't really know what's up with Atlanta and you heard that album, that shit fucked you up. That shit blew your goddamn mind. Like, you was like, I can't believe this shit is... You know what I mean? Aquemini. Come on. I was an instant fan. Like, niggas from New York, Cali, whoever. I don't give a fuck where you was, dog. Yeah. Max714 said, be in there for hours. You be in a record store mad long. Remember, um, but yeah, you heard that motherfucking Aqu- AT Aliens, my nigga? You, yo, everybody was on that. You know what I mean? You be, yo, you be in a record store for hours, dog. Remember when Tower Records? Tower Records was like Tower Records, Sam Goody. What was the other joint? Virgin, Virgin uh, Record Store. 
My nigga, you be in there for hours, nigga. You wouldn't even go through. You just going through the fucking records, my nigga. Plotting on what you're going to buy. $20 was nothing to music back in the day. $20 was a willful donation for me. $19.99, $18.99. Remember, records was like $14, $13, $17.99, $18.99. Nigga, you ain't even think about that shit when you bought an album, bro. I was buying albums off just to look. Remember that? Remember that, um, yeah, OGC? Oh, man, I used to love that shit. Sound waves, yo, F F Y E word. You know what I'm saying? Dog. I, I bought albums off the look. I would go through Tower Records and just go through the hip hop section just one by one. A, B, C, D. And I would just go through that shit till I just seen something that looked interesting. And half the time I would just buy a lot of dark men. You better shut up. You better shut up about a lot of dark men, nigga. Anything with a Wu Tang symbol on it, nigga, was bought. You understand? Remember when they had that Wu Tang Think Differently album? And it was like the Apple symbol with the W on it? I bought that just off the look. And I looked at the back. That shit was fire. That shit was fire. Yeah, them double, them double M, them double joints. Double album star coming out. Man, yo. Peace to everybody, yo. Peace to everybody tuning in. This is motherfucking Blade Runner Radio. We talking about should we abandon mainstream rap at this point as black people. But now, we're just talking about the motherfucking good old days, my nigga. When it was all good. Before we had the Suki Dookies. And these little skinny, scarecrow, dreadlock, gun-toting, drill fuck niggas. Little scary scarecrows. Scare, <laughs> scare Negroes. Yeah, Snoop Dogg came out. He fucked everybody head up. Capadonna, The Pillage. That was my shit. It was so much, man. It was so much, man. We, 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 we was, nigga. Oh, yeah, Bone, Bone Thugs. Yo, when Bone Thugs came out, son, they fucked me up, too. The purple tape, forget about it. My man said, yeah, Virgin Megastore, Rod Digger. My man said, Shaheen, word. Tragedy Gaddafi is like one of my favorite rappers. I actually got music with Trash. And, yo, Shaheen, Lost Generation album. There's no excuse for these niggas to be this trash, son. You understand what I'm saying? Think of all the ill young rappers. The back in the day. DMX when he came out. Niggas was just incredibly ill. Core Mega. There's no excuse for y'all niggas to suck, son. Shaheen was like 13, son. He was a child. A plus. The youngsters. Like, these niggas was nice. Killer Army when they was mad young. They was nice, dog. Jamal. Fade them all, Jamal. There's no excuse why y'all little these niggas suck. These niggas older than that. They 17, 18, 20, 24. You understand? Remember when Styles P said, he said, don't ever fucking ask me to kick a 16 because I was better than you when I was 16. Nigga, dead ass. Like y'all niggas suck and there's no excuse for y'all. Killer Sin was everybody's guy. Matt. Killer Priest. Killer Priest, my homeboy, too. He's a cool dude. Funny as just hilarious dude. Smart as hell, too. Joey Badass is, is official. Black Thought is probably one of the best rappers breathing right now. I'll argue any one of you niggas. Bar for bar, he's probably one of the nicest niggas on the earth. Yeah, these niggas suck, son. And there's no you, there's no reason you suck like that. Because niggas was young. It's you choosing to suck. You know what I mean? Group home, bronze Nazareth, boot clamp. Davies is alright. He he don't got he don't got no flow. You know what I'm saying? Davies don't got no flow. 
Oh, see, y'all agree with me. That nigga Black Thought is probably the nicest nigga bar for bar. Like, other niggas make better songs and, you know what I mean? But when when it come to rap, I would put him in there with the Nas's and niggas like that. Like, no issue. You understand? That motherfucker, like, I don't think we really understood. Let me tell you some fly shit. Let's talk some fly shit, right? Let's talk some fly rap shit. Fly moments in rap. Fly moments in rap. When Black Thought did that Funk Master Flex free, freestyle, I don't think we really appreciated what we was getting at the time. Yeah, Rock Mars is the truth too. Rock Mars is that nigga. Don't forget it. Jada Kiss, Planet Asia, that's my dude. Planet Asia's never kicked a whack verse in his life. Busy Bone, J Electronica. Yeah, Black Thought and Nas is tied for the two nicest to me. But when we got that motherfucking Funk Master Flex freestyle from Black Thought for 10 minutes, that's still some of the most fire shit I've ever heard in my life. Ever. Ever, dog. Yeah, I still listen to that freestyle and find shit that I didn't hear the first time. You know what I mean? That shit is like a Mayan puzzle of bars, nigga. Oh, yeah, come on, Jacquez Retro. Been fucking with Rock Mars since he was in the U.N. Stop playing. Come on, son. Who you talking to now? Who you think you talking to? Come on, man. I wish the worst part about it is like I wish I kept all that physical music I had. I lost the, all of it. But I wish I kept all of it and just carried it with me somehow. Yeah, that hidden track on the Roots album. I remember that shit. Dead ass. My rap name is Rosewood. If you look in my community page, somebody made a mixtape of my music and put it on their page. I was actually shocked by that. It's actually on my community page. If you look right now, there's a mixtape I posted that somebody made of my music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that 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 Black Thought freestyle is probably the illest the illest shit I think we're ever going to hear. That's it's almost like somber when you think about it. Like that moment will never happen again, bro. <laughs> he said, "Oh shit, I'm Rosewood." Yeah, I'm Rosewood. <laughs> Yeah, I call my name Ghost now. I be I, I don't really into the rap world like that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck for the cash act slap, brother Zeke. Where you was at, man? MF Doom. I was listening to MF Doom today while I was cleaning up the crib. And the crazy part about MF Doom, I didn't really appreciate him when he when I first heard him. It took me some while to start. Realizing how nice that nigga was I didn't really get it Cause it was so It was so Different You know what I mean Uh Coogee Rap Yeah Yo Remember Coogee Rap Made that Uh The album was called Um Roots of Evil And Coogee Rap Made an album called A song called Thug Love Story This nigga made like A 10 minute movie Rap it was like the beat switched like three times. It was like three different chapters to a fucking movie. That was like some of the illest shit I ever heard. And I think that Black Thought Freestyle is like something like that. Like just somebody that's nice going way above and beyond. Like they're just doing something that can't be fucked with. You understand? Yeah, you remember that shit. The Roots of Evil joint. And he did a whole song. And it was like a, it was like a, it was like a movie, dog. Four, five, six was my shit too. That it's a shame shit. That was my shit. And uh, pull out some. How to go? Pull out a bottle for the brothers. And he was rapping about dudes and shit. And yeah, that shit was ill, yo. Keep it real on the street and always look out for one another. Yo, man. We we came from a good time, man. 
Yo, that I, I, if you talking about the latest common freestyle tracks when he was on um, L.A. Leakers, and I think um, Cook and Soul did a remix to that shit and changed the beat. That shit is so fucking hard. I listen to that shit all the time. I listen to that shit all the time. Look up Common Freestyle, Cook and Soul. That shit is beautiful. Like the beat, everything, yo. Oh, uh, my man Chris G brought up Camp Low. Yo, let me tell you something about Camp Low, bro. Let me tell you something about Camp Low, G. Camp Low, outside of they songs, what you heard, them niggas was stupid nice with it, son. Like, with their own style. Geechee Don and the other guy, I forgot his name, from the Bronx. Son, them niggas was nasty, yo. Like you didn't even you didn't even really put it together. They could rap, but you didn't know how really nice they was till you got their album and was like, yo, these niggas is dis disgusting, son. Extremely stupidly nice with it, son. Like that, yeah, they had their own shit. Yeah, that them niggas was. Them niggas was them niggas was nice, son. Word. The nigga said something like, yo, I dragon skate across the tri-state. And I was like, dragon skate? Who the fuck says that? That sounds nuts. <laughs> like, what? Sugar, Sugar, Geechee, and uh, something, something suede. S Sammy suede or some shit. Somebody will drop it in the comments. Geechee something and... Uh, Sunny, sunny, sunny suede or sunny Gucci or some shit. Forgot them niggas' name, man. Sunny Chiba and Geechee Sway. I knew one of y'all rap nerd niggas was gonna know that. Demetrius Moye. Huh? I knew one of y'all was gonna have it, Justice Raid. I knew I had some rap, some rap fucking aficionados in here. That's why I said, don't even worry about it. I know my listeners, they gonna know. They gonna have that shit. You know what I'm saying? That was ill, man. There was a lot of rappers who had great moments. Like, you know what I mean? I remember when, uh, yeah, Inspector Deck verse on Tupac's song. I remember that. I remember that. Manny Farrow, yo, appreciate the love. Appreciate the love, G. Onyx, yeah, Onyx was the shit. I ain't gonna hold you. Onyx was the shit. And he had ill videos. Yeah, it's all good, Justice. I understood Sonny Chiba. Raz Kaz. Oh, man, y'all dropping some names in this chat. Raz Kaz, bro. Nature of the Threat. Yo, I remember hearing that song. That shit made my brain explode, G. That was like one of the deepest songs I ever heard. And I was like literally disturbed by the shit he was saying. Like, what? We was talking about the slave masters cutting the babies out the mother's stomach and shit like that. I was like, what the fuck? I never even heard that before in my life. Like, yo, had me looking at the motherfuckers mad different. Like, what? Man. Emoto Technique, MOP. Ah, oh, man. That album they did with fucking DJ Premier, Warriors. Oh, my God. That was like. That was like hip. That was like rap perfection. Just that was the, the perfect, perfect album. Miami Life, beautiful music. Yeah, Nature. His album was dope for all seasons. That was the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hus Kingpin. That's that guy, man. That's the man. Oh wow, Prince Paul, a prince among thieves. That was another mind-blowing moment. You know what I mean? But like when we talking about West Coast Cam, we talking about like on the on the like who had the best who had the best debut? Like who was the first person that came out like that they just immediately was like the best debut? I'll say it was a couple dudes. That regardless of what, I would say you got to put Nas in there, right? 
You got to put, I would put Fat Joe in there somewhere. Um, I would definitely, definitely put DMX in there. DMX, when he came out, stay out the dark. Because when I catch you when the sun is down, run it, clown. Come up off that. I'm going to gun it down. However it's going to go, it's going to be that. See that? Should have finished you, dog. Believe that. Do you value your life as much as your possessions? Don't be a stupid nigga. Learn a lesson. Dog. That first, I'm talking about from the first time you heard these niggas. Not when they first dropped. I'm talking about from the first time you heard these niggas rap, son. It was like, yo, your fucking mind exploded, son. And then, Fat Joe, when he came out with Gotta Flow Joe, that's the first time I heard that shit. And I was like, who the fuck is this Puerto Rican motherfucker? Big pun? Big pun when he came out? Big pun? Punisher? When he was still Big Punisher, nigga? Son, that nigga was so nice, niggas didn't even know he was Spanish. You thought he was black. The first song I heard was fucking uh, You Ain't a Killer on the uh, Show Me the Money DJ Clue tape, my nigga. Show Me the Money Part 2 or Part 1. Word up. Black Trash was ill, that sticky finger shit. Big pun, when I heard Beware, I was like, yo, what the fuck? Big pun was stupid nice. The DOC... First time I heard him, I was hooked on that guy too. DLC was stupid. Chino XL. Yeah, I used to buy Onyx too. Tupac Tupac didn't really get to me until uh What was the album? I think you, of course I get around, but the album when he was in jail, like that was the first one I bought and I was like, "Oh shit." This nigga's nice. I don't know. Ja Rule, when he came out, I would say 50 Cent had an ill debut for sure. I got to say, now, if we're talking about just rap-wise, if we're talking about just rap-wise, the first time you heard some shit like Wu-Tang, yeah, that was that fucked me up. Give to the, yeah, yeah. Me Against the World, that's the album. The first time you heard some shit, it was like, yo, 50. Another person said 50. 50 wasn't the best rapper. Half a mil, wow. I, mean, I used to love Half a Mil. I had both his tapes. His first one and the second one. Juvenile popped off big. I think I, think I would have to give it to either Snoop as far as who came out with their debut and just blew the fuck up like ridiculous, it would it would be like Snoop or probably Fifty Cent because Fifty Cent I Fifty Cent wasn't what he was when he came out. It was like he was just like yo that nigga, and then he disappeared and the nigga came back all diesel and shit, and nigga was with Eminem and he was like what the fuck, and then the nigga album was actually ill. You know what I'm saying? And then it fucking was like, I was in Atlanta, nigga, and every motherfucking body had that fucking album, dog. Every low rider, every fucking Cutlass Supreme, every fucking where you went, niggas was playing that fucking Get Rich or Die Trying, son. Bone Thugs and Harmony, definitely. Definitely. That was a big group. Bone Thugs and Harmony was a big deal. When they came out, I used to listen to. I still listen to East Night East uh, East nineteen ninety nine. Though that shit is still magical album, son. The way them niggas rap, you ain't never heard no shit like that. Like original, original rap, original style. Like nobody raps like you. Nobody. You got to give it to Bone Thugs. You got to give it to Bone Thugs. <laughs> Jimmy Crack Corn said, I remember that week vividly 50 album came out. Dog. Them Ice Cube solo albums was a big deal. Yeah. I didn't like Game First album. The second one was nuts. The Doctor's Advocate shit, that shit was insane. Yeah, I would I would have to put um 
I would have to put in the modern times, I would say like Snoop, then probably DMX, and then 50 Cent. 50 Cent shit was stupid, son. I don't think people understand, like, that ain't, yo. Jeezy, yeah, Jeezy was big deal. Jeezy was a big deal. That was around 1998, 99, early 2000s. Maybe a little later in the 2000s. I was in a, I was in Atlanta at the time. And that nigga Jeezy was that nigga, son. Don't get it fucked up. When Jeezy came out, MC8, <laughs> he said, MC8 album, we was, <laughs> wait, what he said? He said, M Max714 said, MC8 album, we come up strapped was classic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeezy was like 2005. Yeah, but when Jeezy came out, son, everybody in Atlanta was playing that shit, son. The snowman, dog. And then, and then yeah, and then Kanye, Jimmy Crackhorn said Kanye debut was hot, too. I would give it to Kanye. Kanye was a big fucking deal, for sure. Raekwon's solo album was a big deal. We're talking about them like just from really high to like in between mainstream underground. Drew Hunchell said Lloyd Banks is hella slept on. Hell fucking yeah he is. If you never heard that motherfucking them Halloween Havoc mixtapes on YouTube, them Lloyd Banks shits, you are doing yourself a disservice, dog. You are doing yourself a disservice. Lloyd Banks, Halloween Havoc, them shits was stupid. Yeah, Kanye was, Kanye had a little, Kanye had something special. And Kanye wasn't, oh, ain't really the best rapper. But he he had like a good balanced package of appeal. You know what I'm saying? Word up. Who else, who else, who else, who else, who else? Spice One, OC. What was the album called? Jules? I, I bought that album like twice. That Jules album. Jada Kiss album was mad hype. Red Man. I, I had all Red Man's early albums, though. I had Exhibit's album. At the Speed of Life. <laughs> Wayne. Wayne didn't really get, I didn't really get sold on Wayne, but I'll, I'll give him props when he spit some shit. Like, when it's hot, it's hot. I don't even front on that. Yeah, Red Man, man. There's a Dark Side. Muddy Waters, nigga. Muddy Waters? Fam. Muddy Waters, nigga. Superman Lover. I know them shits by heart, dog. You know what I'm saying? Still. Keith Murray had a good debut. Yeah, man. It was a lot of people. It's like... And when we talk about abandoning rap music, we're not talking about all of this magic that we're talking about right now. All of this beautiful, amazing shit. You know what I'm saying? Cellar Dwellers. I remember that. What was that song called? Perfect Combination. I forgot how shit go. It's something like that. Beanie Siegel. Cushion orange juice. That's when the internet new age niggas started popping. Cushion orange juice. I used to listen to that shit with my boy Josh Lamont, my boy uh, Theme Music. You know what I mean? He was he put me onto that. Word up, Lost Boys. Man, Bone Thugs. If you listen to Bone Thugs high back in the day, they put you in a, another type of. It's like when you listen to Bone Thugs. Yeah, I love currency. I love currency. I love that guy. When you listen to current, when you first listen to Bone Thugs, it didn't make sense. It's like when you learn a language. Like you know, how if you learn the language, it's like it don't make sense for mad long, and then one day it just start you start understanding shit. And then I listened to Bone Thugs, and I didn't quite get it. Then one day, I understood that shit. It just hit me like I understood everything they were saying. And I was like, these niggas is nice as fuck. Like, it just hits you one day. It's like your brain just, 
And it was like, yo. Man. Man, T.I. had a good debut. Little B was like the beginning of them internet niggas. Like, you know what I mean? Them YouTube rappers. You know what I mean? Them YouTube rappers. I like Larry June too. I fuck with Larry June. I fuck with Larry June. Fuck with Larry June the hard way. I like chill rap now. I can listen to that. I'm not talking. When I'm talking about in this live stream, I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? We're not talking about that. We're talking about the Suki Dukies and all the fucking drill rap fuckery. That's literally and all the little feminine weird nigga rap like, you know what I mean? That little borderline sus, you know, painting your nails, wearing pocketbooks and shit, like all of that shit right there. Like that type of rap is like weird, man. Fuck all that shit. Action Bronson had a good debut underground too. Word up. Word up. Crooked Eye. Big L. Oh, yeah. Don't. Come on, man. My man said Broderick Black said was LL Cool J ever a rapper. You must be uh, kind of young, buddy. LL Cool J was the first. You know what I'm saying? My man said the freak said I was thinking about this yesterday. I think it started back in two live crew in the lawsuit in Miami. Yo, you know what? I remember Two Live Crew, and I remember that album cover, and I remember like it was like very provocative, son. Yeah, the little dude, yo, bird so fired. Yeah, the dude that was dancing in the XXL, he did like a little, a little jig at the end of his rap, because his bars was fucking horrible, and then he just started dancing like a little, little pickany. You know what I mean? Niggas start doing a man tan dance. Word. These niggas is modern day minstrels out here. This ain't even rap no more. This is minstrel shit. You know what I'm saying? Spoonie G. Y'all motherfuckers got a good ass rap memory, yo. I like, yo, Loopy Fiasco's first two albums was fire. First two albums was fire. Yeah, the Pimple Butterfly, that shit was sick. Man. Yeah, Big Crit, Moving Silence said Big Crit. I don't even know what happened to that guy. He just disappeared. Big Crit was popping at one point. Can't forget about Griselda. Can't forget about that. Smooth the Hustler, I was just listening to that shit like two weeks ago. Little Brother, I love that. Man. The Cool, man. That song... Remember the song on the cool when he rapped the shit that was produced by Kanye when he rapped a story about a nigga coming back from the grave? Remember that shit? He was rapping about a nigga digging himself out of grave and walking back. Yo. Lupe, Asco, Lupe Fiasco had Jay-Z on his first album, though. That's how nice he was back in the day. You know what I mean? Yeah, y'all know what song I'm talking about. The nigga rapped. The nigga rapped about a nigga coming back to life out the grave, and the beat was nuts. Yeah, Gangstar, man, brand newbie. I'll keep holding on. I used to love that song from Brand Newbie. Smooth the hustler above the rim soundtrack. That Pac song, Pain. Remember when that shit came on at the end of the movie? Ah, oh, man. That shit made you want to go buy that shit immediately. Drill rap. The Freak says, what does drill rap mean? Fill them in, gentlemen. What does drill rap mean? What does that drill mean? Just replace the D with a K, my brother. Rome Streets is ill. I love AZ. Pieces of a Man is probably one of his most slept on classic albums just in general ever made. Pieces of a Man was damn near perfection, dog. Pieces of a Man was fucking perfection by AZ. Perfection. 
know what I mean? Guru, Nipsey Hussle. I didn't really get on Nipsey till later on. But I remember being in New York. And my boy, I think I was with my boy Theme Music, Josh, man. And we went, it was something we was at, and, and Nipsey Hussle was performing at uh SOBs, yo. Way back in the day. Way back in the day. Word up. Yeah, people sleep on cats like that, man. Yo, hey, hey Max714 says so I was the only nigga with pieces of a man. Yeah, I used to play that shit. To to Illmatic was perfection. So I got a question for you guys. Who had who had perfect albums? Who had perfect albums? And we'll, we'll you know what I'm saying? Who had who had a perfect album to you? Rhyme and Reason soundtrack. OC Jules album was magic. Who had a perfect album, dog? Ah, Supreme Clientele. I'm shocked we didn't bring that up earlier. Supreme Clientele, my nigga. Son. Supreme Clientele was OD. Common B, that album was ill. Reasonable Doubt. West Side Connection, Nas DMX, Karis One. Everybody lost tapes. Damn, that shit's going fast. I can't even read it. Far Side, Iron Man, GFK. Lil Wayne, The Corner 3, The Chronic, Jay-Z, Blueprint, It's Dark and Hell is Hot, Mob Deep, Equimini, Common Like Water for Chocolate was ill, Big Pun, Capital Punishment, definitely, Ice Cube, America's Most Wanted, Black Star, hell yeah, Black on Both Sides, Machiavelli, Jay-Z, Black Album, OC Jewels, Purple Tape, Magna Carta, Liquid Swords, The Chronic, Equimini, AT Aliens, West Side Connection, Drake, Take Care, Equimini, The Chronic. Yeah, by the way, a perfect album is damn near unskippable, dog. Not, no skips. Tupac, Are You Still Down? Magna Carta was ill. The Infamous, yes, for sure. The Stakes is High, Lauren Hill, Miseducation. Late registration, Helter Skelter, Buster Rhymes, It Was Coming, Raucous, Lyricist Lounge. Kevin Gates had a great album. I never heard that one. Rock Marciano Reloaded, Killer Priest, Heavy Mental, Dog. Heavy Mental, I was just thinking about playing that today. That's how ill that shit was. Illmatic, Good Kid, Mad City, Sound Bombing, Blueprint, Getty Green, yes sir. Wu-Tang, Wrath of the Math, Beg for Mercy, most deaf first album for sure. Man. Yeah, no skipping tracks, baby. It was written, definitely. It was written. Styles P, Gangsta and the Gentleman. The Fuji, the Fuji, the score. GZ 101 was damn near the best album of all time. <laughs> Grave Diggers, Urban Legend, Wu Tang Forever. Death Certificate, Loaded Lux, Loaded Lux Freestyle. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Alfredo was Magic by Freddie Gibbs. Yeah, Heavy Mental stands to, to test the time, yo. Devin the Dude, Hard Knock Life, Wrath of the Math, Nas, King Disease 3, Dead Presidents. Yeah. Yeah, Let's Get Free was fucking ill. Fucking broke my brain. De La Soul, AOI, Bonix, Lauren Hill, Styles P dropped the album called Float, Killer Priest, Saffron, Com yeah, Capone and Noriega, War Report, Mr. With the Info, Mr. O with the Info, you goddamn right, you know what I mean, <laughs> Prodigy and Alchemist, Albert Einstein, oh my god, yes sir, that shit is insane, CNN, Wyclef album, Tanner Talk by Ben and Butcher. Jizzle. See, y'all some cool dudes, man. Y'all got some y'all got some good taste in rap, man. Y'all got some good taste in rap, man. Mr. Don't Play Project Pat was fucking ill. Biggie Smalls, Life After Death. Man. 
Good times, man. That's all you can say is good times, man. That's why it makes me more pissed off that shit is the way it is now, dog. That's why that shit pissed me off so much now. Because, like, it's unnecessary, yo. It's, uh, it's like, yo, niggas took all the goodness out of it. I mean, the music still is that it still exists. Capadonna, the pillage, but it's just not on the forefront. And, I, and, and, and on the low, I kind of feel bad for these kids because... If they did hear that music, it'd be a lot fucking cooler. They wouldn't be fucking nerds and weird. They'd be a lot cooler if they had that music as they, they blueprint on how to act. You know what I mean? Mad Villainy, MF Doom, Rakim the Master, Juvenile, Killer Army, Silent Weapons, Brandon Cameron. Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. And the second one they had, I forgot what it was called. Damn. What was that album? The second one. Dirty Weaponry by Killer Army, nigga. Bruh. That's they had this nigga. Y'all probably don't y'all gotta be real real Wu Tang crackheads to know what I'm talking about. There was a dude that was rapping on the Killer Army now album. Named Holocaust. On everything I love. This nigga. Was one of the nicest niggas I ever heard in my life. And I thought Killer Sin was nicer than everybody. That nigga Holocaust. Whoa. That shit he got with that uh, Bobby Digital song. What's that song uh, with Bobby Digital and Holocaust? Bobby Digital. And he was like, you falling down an endless tunnel of doom reality. Graphically, my endless little storms of galaxy. That shit. Holocaust album, Hell's Winter. I got to look that up. I never heard that. Killer Priest and Holocaust. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That nigga Holocaust, bruh. Whoa. <laughs> Silkworm. Yo, son, my nigga. Silkworm? Bruh. My nigga. That Bobby Digital album was dope. Yeah, the video with Rizzo in the chair. I don't know if you're talking about that or you're talking about um <sighs> Tragedy. What's that song? It comes in rain again. Them Wu-Tang videos used to be some other shit, son. I don't see how these niggas all just do a bunch of videos standing around flashing guns like weirdos. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas' videos is, was movies, yo. The fucking Triumph video? Dog. The Triumph video? That shit was insane, son. Ah man, show the love. The freak said, "Thinking man's Templar just wanted to say I really enjoy all your YouTube posts. You made me think about current times and future expectations. You have great insight. Yo, I'm glad I could be of service, as I always say. I'm just here to I'm just here to be of service. You know what I mean? And I think sometimes us as black men, we forget about the good times. We be so used to talking about the bullshit that sometimes it just feel good to talk about the good things. You know what I'm saying?" Sons of Man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's good to remember that good stuff because it, it, it reminds you that you come from a special cloth. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You you come from a special cloth, man. You know what I mean? You was, you was, you, you was brought up right. And even if you come from the hood, you still was, you still had enough coolness to survive you into your 40s. You know what I mean? Like, you're a different breed. You're a different breed, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I think we got to always remember these times in the midst of the Suki Dookies and the Hood Rat Deadpools and the fucking Coil Arrays and the fucking... I, I don't even know these little rap niggas no more, man. That's why I be telling you the, the females is more famous because I don't even listen to them and I know they exist. I don't even know these little rap dudes. I don't even know who the fuck they are. You know what I'm saying? I can't even name them like that. 
You know what I mean? It's always like YBN, Young, Fivo, Fivo. I, I don't know these niggas, man. I'm unfamiliar, but you know these girls because they always on the internet with some bullshit. Yeah, these niggas just sit them. You know I mean, they just do a bunch of whole shit on the internet, and it's like it outshines the actual music. Like, I don't even know what songs these motherfuckers is making, yo. Somebody said, Wu, Wu, TMT, who's your favorite Wu Tang member? Mine is you, God. I would have to say Raekwon because I feel like, I feel like, this is my personal opinion. I feel like every every Wu Tang member was represented one type of dude in the hood. If that makes sense. I feel like every Wu Tang member represented one kind of cool dude that was in the hood back in the day. Method Man was one kind of dude. Ghostface was another kind of dude. I'm more like Raekwon. That's kind of I feel like that's my personality. If you had to match, it's not about liking. Your favorite Wu Tang artist is about the one that matches you. You know what I'm saying? That's how deep it goes. Like everybody has a Wu Tang person that represents you. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. I feel like that. I feel like everybody is represented by a certain Wu Tang member. You know what I mean? Everybody, some dudes might feel like they like ODB or they like, you know, they rep, they like Jizza or they like Ghost or they like Inspector Deck or they like Rizza or they like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody has their own person. Yeah, Ghostface is like Slick Rick, word, that ass. You know what I mean? I'm more like, I'm more, I'm like, I'm more like, uh, I'm more like Raekwon, you know what I'm saying? Because we all, we all took pieces of rappers. Yeah, Killer Sin was that nigga. Iron Man was ill too. We all took pieces of rappers and combined all of their different personalities to make ours. Or oh, just our our demeanor. You know what I'm saying? That's how deep it was. You know what I mean? Everybody could name the rappers that they feel like that's how they are. Like I these these three rappers personify my personality even the way you talk you know a lot of niggas talk like this you know what i'm saying and he real low like that you know what i'm saying either that's like the niggas who was like nas type niggas back in the day you had the jay-z type dudes was like the real flashy you know what i mean type cats back in the day everybody was somebody you know what i mean i feel like it was like mixed of nas raekwon and like prodigy i feel like those was my my i meshed those three personalities together to make my my steez so to speak you know what i mean everybody had their own steez that you got from a rapper you know what i mean or rappers yeah i remember the bush babies Clayface. hell yeah i remember the bush babies everybody everybody has their own little mixture you know what i mean because you because when you come up as a young man you taking pieces from people and you building up your steez. That's what we used to call it back in the day. For those who's younger, it's to be your steez, like your style. Like you, you got you like a you like a you know you're a piece of this, you're a piece of that. You know what I mean? And that made you. That's how you got your coolness. Now these little niggas is not cool. They're not cool at all. They're cornballs. You know what I'm saying? They're not. You know. How can I explain it? You know what I'm saying? I, I I feel like y'all understand what I'm saying. Like if y'all really looked at it and said like, yo, I feel like I'm like a, I'm like Ghostface influenced me. These guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dark Matter Reality says Styles P was one of mine. Like you all had somebody that gave you a little bit of your, your, your style. You know what I mean? Everybody. Rap. That's what rap was. My man said, DC225 said, KD3 main Nas the undisputable go. I would say, and this might be a, a uh, weird opinion. I didn't really like the last King. The, I didn't really like the Magic 2 album. I didn't like that. 
But the other ones, yeah. That one when he's doing all the trappy beats, I ain't I wasn't feeling that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's me. I listened to it like once or twice and I was like over it. I was like, I'm good. I'll I'll act like this one didn't count. You know what I mean? But he's still the, the GOAT. Don't get it fucked up. Nas could drop a, you know, and I ain't gotta like it. You know what I'm saying? He, you know. Ali Vegas was nice. Hell yeah, Ali Vegas was ill, man. He kind of took a back seat though. I think he some of them cats don't really want to be famous like that. That fame start coming and niggas want to fall back a little bit. You know what I mean? Uh, David with a Y said, he say Luda. He say he's kind of Luda. You know what I mean? Luda gave him his his swag a little bit. And it makes sense. Yeah, Jaque Jaquez Retro. I don't rock with Hit Boy producer. I don't like Hit Boy beats like that. I don't feel like Hit Boy Beats is, is ill like that. But I love Alchemist. Yeah, Reform, Hotep. I love me some fucking Alchemist. I wish. I wish before I leave this earth that Alchemist and Nas would do a fucking album, though. The same type of shit. You know what I'm saying? With like Prodigy and Alchemist. Do something like that. Like 15 songs. Just really do something. He did one with Rock. He did one with a bunch of dudes. I just want to see Alchemist and Nas do an album. I think I'll be in hip hop bliss and it rap can literally disappear the next day and I'll be fine. Like I, I feel like I've listened to all the ill shit I need to hear in my life. And I could just work backwards after that. I don't need no more new shit. I could just listen to all shit after that. You know what I'm saying? Yo. I can't even get with that, man. Um. I heard the Alchemist Larry June album. That shit is stupid hot. It's a lot of dope shit out there, fam. Like it, it at the end of the day, we talking about should we abandon rap music? Yeah, a certain group of rap music, fuck yeah. But us us dudes, us thinking men and us real hip hop aficionados, we always gonna be good. You know what I mean? We could turn all that shit off and be forever good. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Bless me. I felt that fucking sneeze coming like a motherfucker too. Straight up. We always going to be good. Oh yeah, Missy Elliott. But Nas and Alchemist, man. Man. That would be magic. I don't think I would need to hear anything else after that. Prodigy passed away. You know what I mean? That Prodigy shit hurt. That hurt. That hurt me more than pop. I ain't gonna hold you. When Prodigy died, that shit hurt me more than pop. Pac, I was a little, I was sad, but Prodigy, I was like legit hurt. Like, oh. Like, I was raised on this dude. This dude raised me. You understand? I thought Prodigy was like one of the coolest niggas ever to walk the planet, yo. Word up. You never seen Prodigy not cool. Like, you never seen Prodigy off point. Like, I never seen Nas off point. Like, these dudes, like, them niggas was cool. That's some Queens shit. Anybody who know anybody from Queens, that's some Queens nigga shit, dog. Queens niggas is the coolest. These niggas is cool, cool. Word up. When Prodigy, man. Yeah, DMX was sad too. You know what I mean? Prodigy, bro. I remember that day, yo. I remember looking on the fucking, hearing that shit. And was like, what? No. Not Prodigy, dog. Because that shit just came out of nowhere. Like, he was good. And he just instantly was gone, son. Yeah, you was like disappointed about Pop. You know what I mean? Like, damn, son. Pop hit hit different because he was like, but he was, it was so much going on with that dude. It was almost like, damn, they finally got this nigga, man. Prodigy just happened out of nowhere. Yo, Prodigy hurt, son. You know what I mean? I remember riding my bike in the rain to buy murder music, though. 
I remember riding my bike in the rain to get that shit. And coming back to the crib, and it was like eight of my boys, and we was all in the living room in the dark listening to that shit in silence. Pure silence. You understand? Nobody said shit. And then I think it was two it was two standout songs on that album. The song with Coogee Rap and the song with the Sade sample where it was like, uh, have you ever lost a loved one? And no, no, until you lost one, where your heart at? I left mama high with my dearly departed. That song, and then when the fucking my man, I I'll never forget my man Dwight words. Rest in peace. He was like, "Yo, that shit was like a movie." Doom, 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 doom. Doom, doom, doom. Yo, son. And then that Kooji rap. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. Yo, son. Bruh. Yo, Prodigy was damn sure damn sure my top five is not my favorite next to like Nas and Ray and You know what I'm saying? That song fucked me up. Like I had some like think about the magic moments listening to certain albums, bro. Trials of Yeah, H and I C was ill too. Bruh. Everybody had their memories. Like every the music is like connected to your life. You know what I'm saying? Like when Still Matic came out. Remember when Still Matic came out? Nah, Still Matic, dog. That was another album. I was in college. We was sitting around listening to that shit in the dorm room. Niggas ain't say nothing. That's when you used to really listen to that shit, bro. Like. The realest shit you ever heard in your life. Yeah, Tragedy of Mon Thug, Illuminati. That was another song that fucked me up. Man. The realest, man. That was... Man, I miss that dude, Prodigy, man. I, I'm, I'm so curious as to what he would be making right now. You know what I'm saying? Pardon me. I'm real. I'm real curious as as to what Prodigy would would be making right now. You know what I'm saying? That Hegelian dialect. The, the, what? How that shit was? Hegelian dialect album. The Prodigy shit. I didn't even like that album at first, and then I listened to it a couple more times. I was like, this shit is fucking ill. Word up. Thinking, man, who inspired you to listen to beats and make beats? Well, I don't particularly make beats. I used to rap, but. I don't know who really inspired me. I think the first time I really heard rap, and here's a good one. When was the first time you really heard hip hop and you heard a song and you was like hooked after that? I think it was, it was a day, it was like a summer day and I was hanging around my uncle. He was fixing, working on his car and he was playing Run DMC, Mary, Mary, Why You Bugging? And I never forget how I was like, oh shit. What the fuck is this shit? You know what I'm saying? And I never forget like wanting more of it after that. And that was like the rest of my life. <laughs> it was like for the rest of my life. I think it was that song. Mary Mary Why You Bugging by Run DMC. And then it made me start doing more re research. Like you hear that one song and then you just started looking for it. Like more rap, more rap. Might have been LL Cool J. It might have been Cool Mo D or some shit. And after that, you just started finding more and more and more. Like, you know what I'm saying? And this this will tell you how old the niggas is in the chat. Because when niggas start saying Grandmaster Flash, you know, that nigga like 50-something. You know what I'm saying? LL Cool J, My Radio. Yeah, like that first song, you was like, oh, shit. Wheels is still. Ah, ATL, word. Jay-Z, Hard Not Life. So some of y'all's in your 30s. Some of y'all are younger. Yeah, first time you heard DMX, so that's a younger guy. Prodigy Daughter Rap, word. 93 to Infinity. Infinity. Yeah, Run DMC. Kumo D, Schooly D, Saturday Night. Souls of Mischief. Yeah, he said, yeah, I'm 52. You already know, yo. Cold Crush. Nerd. 
my shit dead wrong. I used to hang out with Clark Kent and the Superman because Clark Kent was my cousin in law, Reasonable Doubt era. Slick Rick, Mona Lisa, Run DMC, Audio 2. Yeah, like them songs, it started you on a, like a never ending quest to chasing that dragon, like to get that first fa- that first feeling. Buster Rhymes went to sta- dis- dis- Disaster Strikes, Rakim Ala, man, LL Cool J. Yeah, Hard Not Life was like, yeah. I was like 97, 90, 98. Word. Run DMC, Tricol Quest, Regulators, White Lines. Wow, you going back. <laughs> Word. Yeah, I'm 42. Yeah, I'm glad to be 42, nigga. I don't give a fuck. Can't nobody tell me shit. You know what I mean? I'm 42 and I'm good, nigga. I still look good. I still feel good. Ain't nobody telling me shit. And I'm still cool than a motherfucker, nigga. You understand? Word up. Houdini. Yeah, it was. Uh, oh, Mad Mad One Love. I don't know what that is. Uh, Buster Rhymes got you all in check. Like, son, them songs fucked you up. Yeah, man, it's good that you're supposed to get older. See, that's what I'm saying. They try to teach you that you ain't supposed to get older. Like, getting older is what the whole point of life is, nigga. So they got these niggas going against their own nature. In music, they own natural nature. The first law of fucking nature is self preservation to exist. And these niggas are rapping about the exact opposite of nature. These niggas don't even want to live, dog. Like, what the fuck? Niggas going against everything holy out this motherfucker. You're supposed to want to grow up and get older and. You know what I mean? Enjoy your kids and shit. Yeah, Chris G, I'm 40, still looking good. Yeah, fuck these niggas, man. You know what I mean? 32, 43. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, brother. It's a beautiful goddamn thing. These niggas is going against actual nature. Niggas is blessed to be fucking 40, man. And having your fucking life the way you want it to be. 25 is a good year, man. Oh, boy. And you know what's crazy? I can't even remember 25 like that. That's was when you get like 40, it's gonna be hard to look back on 25 and remember that. The shit that was going on around then. You're not gonna remember that shit. You're gonna be like, damn, what the fuck? What was I doing at 25? You you need to start writing a diary or something, man. A re- recording or getting on YouTube. Just something so you can at least look back and remember like these days. You you really don't realize how quickly it goes by. And then you look back and it's like your memory, you can't really pull it out the out your mind. Like, damn, what the fuck was I doing? And and the crazy shit, the things you stressing about at 25 and 24 and some females, some little problems you had at 25 and 24, trust me, yo, you ain't even going to remember them shits at probably 30, son. You ain't even going to remember that shit happened. You know what I'm saying? You just thinking like, like, like it was all bad, like life was over type shit. A shorty leave you, you think it's like, oh my God. Like when you get like 40, my nigga, you ain't, that shit ain't even a memory. I got exes, I can't remember what them bitches look like. I can't remember their names, nigga. You know what I'm saying? If somebody put their picture in front of me, I might be able to, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even remember them. To all my young boys, don't even stress that shit that got you stressing. Even if it is stressing, you just know you're going to get past it. And one day, it's just going to be a distant memory, kid. Distant motherfucking memory. Ask all the older guys in here, man. They'll tell you. They'll tell you. Don't even worry about it, young bro. It ain't even that serious. Whatever you think is that serious, it ain't that serious, kid. Word. Word up. Yeah. Yeah. David Wood Wise said, my pops told me once you got out of high school, time is going to fly. And he was right. Yeah. <laughs> Them problems at 25. Then you got over it. Exes, I remember the pussy, but not their names. That's true. You do remember a little shit. You know what I mean? But it, but it, you're not, you're not going, it's not only the standout memories, right? The standout memories is going to matter. You know what I mean? Special things. But all that little inconsequential shit that niggas be stressing about, you're not going to give a fuck, yo. Mr. MG just said, if you're on this live, your mindset probably surpasses most 25-year-olds these days. 
That is very true. That is that is very true. You understand? Like, if if somebody, if I could go back and tell my younger self something, it would be don't stress that bullshit, bro. That's what I would tell my younger self. Don't 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 beat yourself up about taking an L or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? It don't matter, man. You're gonna bounce back every time, son. Yeah, Lone 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 Square said. The dumber decisions you make, the faster your years go by in a sense. Yeah, I think that happens because you're you're existing within the confines of your mistakes. You understand? Word up. You're living within the confines of your, your, your mistakes. Life has a different feel to it. You're not really existing. You're kind of fighting your way out of situations all the time. But once you get a hold on it and you start making the right decisions, you start to feel the days. You start to enjoy more of the simple shit. You know what I'm saying? Just being able to kick it or have your own time and, and you know, chill with your family and go on a trip or, you know, just whatever you do that you enjoy. When you have things together, it, it feels better. But when you like struggling you only really have time to, to to slow down and smell the flowers, so to speak. You know what I mean? You're too busy trying to fight your way out of a fucking predicament, nigga. Yeah, living in the confines of your mistakes. Whether that's jail, whether that's financial shit, whether that's whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? So you got to figure out a way to have a good run, man. Like, you know, get a good run and then... Stick to that plan Like keep running that That same momentum And then after a while You're gonna start building on What you've already created And that's when you start Really getting Life start getting good You start Life start getting real good Cause you start building On your wins You know what I'm saying And you start building You start having time To really put your Fucking shit together Like okay I got this Now I can start doing this And maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna write a book Now you know I'm about to start this business now You know what I'm saying I'm about to start traveling I'm about to start doing You start doing things Like that you wanna do The worst part in life Is when you're young Is when Most of the shit you're doing Is not things you wanna do You're doing things You have to do You understand Yeah you, When you start doing What you wanna do That's when you start Life get good When you start Tailoring your life so that most of the time you're doing what you want to do. You're not doing what somebody else wants you to do. I hate doing what niggas want me to do. I like doing what I want to do. Moving South 23, I said, I remember being suicidal. I take it day by day, whether you're taking an L or not. And that's a magical thing. I think I've been in this mental space. Kasim Ram said, 20s was hardcore poverty for me. And at 30, shit is still on high difficulty, but it's turning around. Yo, he said, what? Scott Jones says, where's the super chat? I owe you for the wisdom. Um, Brother Zeke, can you put the cash app in there? That's the best I got. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I am I'm reapply for my monetization. And then one day I'll have all that stuff. And then it'll be like, you know. But right now, I'm not I'm not stressing it. I'm just trying to, you know, deliver these lives and enjoy it. And, and while, is it, while it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't really worrying about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got you to gotta know how to. Yeah, brother Zeke said, brother Zeke said, appreciate this advice for young brothers, especially it takes one to two years to get situated, situated with your finances and goals. Yeah, you got to have like that lock in year, man. You got to have that lock in year, maybe two years. You know what I'm saying? You got to really get get missing on niggas, bro. And just get right to it. Like, don't even stop. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I started truck driving, dog, I was a vapor for fucking like four years straight. I was a vapor. I didn't have no time for nothing. All I wanted to do was get good at this and make this money. I was not, I didn't give a fuck about nothing. Girls, nothing. That's all I wanted to do. And you and you live off the fruits of that later. You give yourself a little bit of leeway and shit, man. You know what I mean? You got to keep building. You got to keep, you got to lock yourself up, dog. 
yeah, don't beat yourself up if you're just getting started in your 30s and 40s. Bro, we, we come up, we inherit dust, first of all. Young black men inherit dust. You don't get nothing. So you don't got the same path to greatness that everybody else. Other people, they get a fucking head start. Their parents got stocks and fucking shit for them when they get out of school and all of that bullshit. They got jobs waiting on them. You don't got that. You got to literally build everything from zero. So if you get to a point where you find yourself at 30 and you just starting to get some leeway. Unfortunately, that's the timetable they put black men in. So we'd be behind the eight ball. You understand? But you got to make that shit count. When you start getting to that point, make that shit count. Because they, they, we inherit dust, dog. We don't get no head starts. We don't get no help. You know what I mean? We getting kicked out the house at 18, 17. You out in the streets fucking trying to figure out everything from nothing. Nobody giving you nothing. So, of course, it's going to be a rough road at the beginning. But when you get to that promised land, make it count, dog. Don't let nobody tell you shit. Fuck that. Word up. Fuck that. It's intentional. Word up. Yeah, brother Zeke. Every generation of black men had to start from scratch, dog. You see what I'm saying? You inherit nothing. You get nothing. So you got to build on what you the opportunities, man. We don't get a lot of chances at at good opportunities. How many times good opportunities really come your way? That you don't create. Some just fall in your lap out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? How many times you really get them chances to just shine? You know what I'm saying? Something just come your way and it's like, oh shit. Little Big Nate show. Happy birthday, G. Happy belated, brother. You know what I mean? You got to... Yeah, you don't got no head starts. And ABWs, they get a lot of fucking help, my nigga. You don't get no help. You struggle, you struggle. You broke, you broke. You know why giving you no crib or no fucking... You a man, You it's hard to even get food stamps as a man, dog. You know what I'm saying? It was hard to apply for that. And if you did give it, they gave you the bare minimum, dog. Word up. They give you the bare fucking minimum. You're not getting five hundred, eight hundred dollars like these bros be getting. Nigga, you ain't getting shit. Kasim Rahm said it's like being born in a grave, buried alive, and you're pulling yourself out like a zombie. Yo, ever think you're run? Moving silence said, ever think you're running out of some days? Don't believe it. You always got time to make a make a make a move, man. You know what I mean? But don't be hesitant on shit. Like that's what I learned. And I'm a I'm a dude. I, I I'm a dude. I'm a I'm like a Aquarius kind of guy. So it take me a while to make a, a a big decision. I'm not very impulsive with a lot of shit. Maybe little things, but big things. I'm not very impulsive. So it takes me a while to make a decision. I will harp over shit for weeks. And then when I finally make the decision, it's like no turning back. Like there's nobody changing my opinions. I'm not changing what I'm doing. I'm full steam ahead. And I become literally obsessed with something I give a fuck about. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the stream, towards the end, we're working towards the end. How do you guys feel about the initial subject? Is it time for black people to abandon rap music at this point? Or just a certain genre of it? Is it, is it you know what I'm saying? Is it time to let that shit go? And as I can tell in the comments, all of you guys are avid hip hop fans. You guys are a library of rap, of, of hip hop music. Spanning for miles. You know what I mean? You guys literally have pulled out names that were hiding in the recesses of your subconscious out like it was at the top of your brain. You know what I mean? You ever be shocked how... You can remember a rap lyric you haven't listened to in like 10, 15 years. It's how embedded in your brain it is. And they act like that shit don't affect people. It does, bro. Yeah. 
He said, I don't believe in it. I don't really believe in it too much, but that does match. He said, I don't believe that, but I'm also Aquarian and got the same trait. Yeah, I will ponder shit forever. Yeah, hip hop forever, but rap, fuck that shit, yo. You know what I mean? Hip hop will live forever, but rap, that shit is. That shit come and go, dog. That shit come and go with the wind. It's just a new phase, a new, new fuck nigga, a new fucking bird ass broad rapping some, rapping about a fucking coochie. Like, women be really acting. You know what's crazy? Women really act like it's that serious. Like, pussy is that fucking great. It is good, but it ain't as the way they say it is. You know what I mean? They act like that shit is like, Life changing is not, yo. They act like men don't like to fucking not give a fuck. I don't, it ain't too many, you know what I'm saying? Ain't too many. Yeah. Word. Even a girl you would consider freaky, you ain't, you gonna be over it. Like, it's like, whatever. You just like, eh. you know what I mean? You just like, eh, whatever. These chicks swear they shit is fucking the end all be all. Like, that's all they wanna rap about. My pussy this, my pussy that, my pussy this, my pussy that, my pussy itch, my pussy scratch. My pussy itch, my pussy scratch. My pussy pink, my pussy stink. Uh huh. Bunch of goddamn. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? It's not that serious. It's not that serious, man. They 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 swear it's that serious. Niggas is damn near desensitized to this shit now. Like y'all really don't understand. Like niggas don't give a fuck about these shits no more. Like they ain't that serious, man. I'm at the age where if it come my way, it come. If it don't, give a fuck. You know what I mean? Do I still have PayPal? Yes, I do. It's the same. It's a uh, ghost god at Gmail, I guess. It's your email address, right? Yeah, it's ghost god at Gmail is the PayPal shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but man, yo, I want y'all to put a one in the chat if y'all enjoyed this live stream. I really enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed having y'all company digitally. I think we had a great conversation. This is Blade running motherfucking radio. The only place to be. You know what I'm saying? It's the same place you could take off your armor, remove your sword, and have conversations with like-minded men. You know what I'm saying? It's the same fucking place. This is the actual place. You know what I mean? This is the actual place. Blade running motherfucking radio with your host TMT. We was talking about it's a time for black people to abandon rap music. And guess what? We came with an answer. We said mainstream rap, yes. But the truth, heart of hip hop will live forever in all our hearts, bro. We never going to walk away. It's always going to be in the way I talk, the way I act, the way I dress, the way I holler at a shorty. You know what I'm saying? The way I fucking put on my goddamn sneakers, walk out the door. It's all the same. The way I count my money. You know what I'm saying? Rap so influential that you count your money like a certain way, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? You fold that shit a certain way. Well, you don't really carry money no more, but you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad we was able to have this meeting, man. I'm glad we was able to sit here. He said, careful, 7-9 seven, seven, said, love you, brother. Been listening for seven years and counting. Damn, I've been out for seven years? Shit. <laughs> I didn't even know it was seven years. <laughs> Guess I've been doing this for a while, yo. You know what I mean? Glad you're doing the live stream th live streams now with all the knowledge. I'm glad I'm doing them too. Uh, David with a Y said, it might be a dumb question, but what's the definition of hip hop and rap and what's the difference? Hip hop is the culture. Hip hop is the feel, the, the, the vibe. The dress, the, the 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 graffiti, the artwork, the DJing, everything that encompasses how a person carries himself, right? Hip hop culture, rap music is just something that you know white label execs put a name on an art firm, art form, and figured out how to make money off it. 
That's just a commercial project. That's just a product. Rap is just a product. Hip hop is a way of life. You know what I mean? It's a prop. It's a way you learn. You know what I'm saying? The five elements of the game. You're right. You see what I'm saying? Chris G said, you are magnificent, brother. No, you are magnificent. You know what I'm saying? I'm just your lowly servant out here just doing what God want me to do. You know what I mean? I feel I'm, I feel like if y'all took anything from these live streams that helped y'all and motivated y'all and inspired y'all and taught you something, I did my motherfucking job. You know what I'm saying? I did my fucking job. That's the whole point. I, and we entertain, we talk, we crack jokes, we build, but it's just like we just do we just dudes in a bar sitting around having a conversation. You know what I mean? Just building. That's what we used to call it back in the day, building. You know what I mean? Most of us are isolated. We're not around a lot of official dudes no more. We're not around a lot of solid cats. So we don't really get to build with nobody. You know, you keep that shit to yourself. You don't really got nobody to think like you or act like you. So you got to, you know, these these times are very important to us. Where we get to have these conversations. Brother Zeke, her body is a graveyard. Wow, I remember that video. That's old. That's like my first video, damn near. It's one of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hip hop is to know what's going on. Hip hop is to move on the path of righteousness and act accordingly to what you know. Word up. Yeah, hip hop is a community where like minded men and women can come in from the world, put down their swords. Hip hop is a beautiful thing. And we can't let these people fuck our shit up. Like, it's all good. Hip hop moving in a wise, informed manner at all times. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop is why I wear my hat like this. You know what I mean? I could be wearing it like this, like a fucking. You know what I mean? Like I play for the Orioles and shit, but I, I rock it like this, man. You know what I mean? That's how I do. That's how I move, man. Word up. Yeah, man. But yo, I want to give y'all, I want to send y'all on y'all way with a word. Um, Always walk in faith. Always, 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 always believe in what the fuck you can't see that you know is there and drives you to make the next move. You know what I'm saying? Don't let anybody ho tell you you crazy and no shit like that. You know what I mean? The cards are in our favor always. If you're a man with discernment, like the, the good book says, you got eyes to see and ears to hear, you're always going to have an advantage. You're always going to know what's going on before everybody. And that peace that comes with knowing is what, what it's all about. That's how you can kick back in your 40s and understand how the world works because you got discernment. You know what I mean? You got wisdom. You know what I mean? Wisdom is 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 everything to me. You know what I mean? Being a wise man is 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 magic. It's it's like it's like the heart and soul of your being. It will always put you in a position to win. You know what I mean? As long as you as long as you you get wisdom, you know what I mean? Like in the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus, it talks about wisdom, loving wisdom. Loving the loving obtaining wisdom. Treat it like something you love dearly. You know what I'm saying? You treat wisdom like a priceless jewel, dog. And don't let nobody tell you you wildin' or something wrong with you because you, you, you see the world a certain way. Fuck them. Fuck all of them. You know what I'm saying? They don't got your light. They don't got your light. They don't have your energy. They don't have your... What you stand for. They don't got none of that. They, they empty vessels. You know what I mean? Fuck them. You the master of your own universe, dog. You know what I mean? On your note, on the last note, once again, this is TMT the Ghost. You've been listening to Blade Runner Radio. It's our third installment, and every installment gets better and better. And it's only thanks to y'all for sticking around and listening and building and participating you make this shit worth worthwhile for me because I learn from y'all just like y'all learn from me. You understand? So it's getting late. I'm going to give me something to eat. Relax a little bit. Try to work on it. Think on the next videos for the Patreon. For all y'all not subscribed to the Patreon, go get on that. That's why I put my old school classic videos, a nice long one hour, 
45 minute conversations with cool music and animations and it's just like a little just something to put your mind on ease and just use so i'm definitely about to get on that and start pondering the next motherfucking patreon video because i feel like i'm gonna take this stuff seriously so it's gonna take a lot more of my time so i'm gonna go ahead and start doing that so thanks thank y'all for listening thank y'all for being here have a good night get some rest get your eight hours don't stay up all night playing 2k and shit like that fuck that game by the way bitch ass niggas gonna put a fucking battle pass in a basketball game you telling me fuck that game bro word up fuck that game straight to death straight up I looked on Twitter, niggas talking about how they spent dollars $3, $3, $3, on 2K this year. That shouldn't even be a possible. But anyway, before I start blacking out, you know what I mean? Fuck 2K. <laughs> it's the last thing I'm going to say. Yeah. But anyway, y'all brothers be safe. Spread love in the chat. Everybody get home. <laughs> get home safe. You know what I mean? Get, well, if you're home safe, stay safe. You know what I mean? Word up. I'm going to get up off here, and I'm going to catch y'all on the next one.